It's like a, the best floral arrangement I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. I love mushrooms. I mean, I really, really love mushrooms. They are an essential part of a plant-based lifestyle because they're such an easy swap for me. But I've got lots of questions about fungi. How do they grow? Where do they grow? And which types have the most unique texture? I'm gonna learn all about their culinary range with chef and mushroom enthusiast, my friend, Sophia Rowe. Then I'll travel to Colorado to see how mushroom roots are being transformed into a hearty new protein. But first, I wanna learn some basics. So, I'm heading out to Smallholds, an innovative farm in Brooklyn, New York. Let's go. When you think about mushrooms, you probably think of those capped little fungi. But there are literally thousands of edible mushrooms out there. And no, I'm not talking about that kind of mushroom. A lot of people think that they don't like mushrooms because they're used to eating the same mushroom and they think all mushrooms are the same, but they're not. It's like saying you don't like mushrooms is like saying you don't like plants. Um, like, a, like the differences between a trumpet and an oyster and a button mushroom, it's like saying like an almond tree versus a head of lettuce um, and an apple. You know, they're very <laughs> different. <makes> Andrew <laughs> Carter and Adam DiMartino founded Smallholds, an organic mushroom farm in 2017. They share a passion for rare mushroom varieties and want to bring those tastes and textures to more people. There's a whole kingdom out there and everyone's used to eating the same mushroom. A white and a brown mushroom and a portobello mushroom, they're all the same mushroom. That's right, white button, crumini, and portobello are all the same type of mushroom. Their scientific name is agaricus, if you want to be fancy about it. The industry grows those because that's what they're used to growing. Consumers are used to consuming those. You can look at other regions like if you go to China or Japan or Korea, the mushroom industry is way more advanced than it is here. So like consumers in certain regions are eating 10 to 20 times as much mushrooms as people are in the United States. So what were your first steps to starting Smallhold? The early beginning was uh, building out a lab in a basement at a house and it looked crazy. Andrew and Adam started experimenting with trumpet mushrooms. After perfecting the process, they expanded to shiitake and oyster. In just five years, that basement startup moved into a shipping container, then to their first farm in Brooklyn. The company has grown rapidly with funds from dozens of investors and a soaring demand for mushrooms. Over the last few years is that people really started getting interested in food as medicine, trying to eat less meat, trying to be sustainable, trying to eat local. All of these things ended up just kind of centering around mushrooms. In 2020, organic mushroom sales grew by 20%. Feeding that demand, Smallholds now grows 15 different types of mushrooms, producing a whopping 1.5 million pounds each year for hundreds of grocery stores and restaurants. Mushrooms are grown by a process called inoculation. A spore is placed deep inside a substrate, like a log. The spores germinate, then feed on the wood, growing into mycelium, or mushroom roots. This fruiting body is probably like four, four days, four or five days old. It takes about four weeks for the roots to be fully grown. That's when cute baby mushrooms called pins start to appear on the surface. In about a week, they're ready to harvest. Fungi are its own kingdom. They're functionally more similar to animals than they are like plants. They breathe in oxygen, they release CO2, they digest stuff, they don't go through photosynthesis and so their interaction with the environment is just so different than plants. Traditional mushroom farms cultivate their fungi in mulch with a mix of hay, straw, and corn cob. But Smallhold is focused on growing in urban areas to make the entire operation more sustainable. City farms might seem strange, but fungi don't require a lot of light, water, or space to thrive. Our mushrooms, we grow, they're called saprotrophic mushrooms, and so they're wood-loving mushrooms. They digest wood. All of the substrates that we're using, that's the stuff that's inside of this block. About 90% of it is sawdust. 
Small holds mushrooms are grown in bags filled with a compound from mills and factories, so they're reusing a byproduct from the timber industry. And those futuristic containers don't just look cool. And so these chambers themselves have really intricate controls over all the climate that they're exposed to. That allows them to forego pesticides. Plus, the fragile mushrooms aren't susceptible to extreme weather. Can you walk me through the environmental impact of growing mushrooms? It's one of the most sustainable products you can probably find in the grocery store. We did a big life cycle analysis, which is a large like, third-party analysis to understand exactly what's going on with your company. Our carbon impact was about 30% less than any other mushroom farm we could find. Over 60% of the country's mushrooms are grown in one Pennsylvania county, which means it takes a lot of fuel to ship them across the country. So a lot of mushrooms are actually imported from overseas, and so the carbon footprint of those is really crazy. Smallholds mushrooms are grown in Brooklyn, Los Angeles, and Austin, Texas. They also operate over a dozen mini farms, custom-built tanks that can grow mushrooms inside restaurants and grocery stores. With farms in strategically placed cities, Smallhold plans to reduce carbon emissions by continuing to ship locally. When you're buying a product from Smallhold, like a fresh mushroom in a grocery store, it was grown close to there. And so we have a national brand, like you can be from New York and go to LA and recognize Smallhold on the shelf, but those mushrooms were grown in LA. Most mushrooms also have a naturally meaty texture, which makes them a great vegetarian swap. The more people eat these products, generally speaking, they're eating less meat, whether they realize it or not. And so every time we get someone to eat a little less beef or a little less chicken, then we think that we have a larger impact on the planet because it's less carbon intensive, less water intensive. Okay, Andrew, we're gonna harvest these mushrooms, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, we have uh, blue oysters, we have lion's mane, yellow oysters, and trumpet mushrooms. Um, but we can start with the blue oyster. Let's do this it. This one's pretty fun because, you know, you can't make any promises, but a lot of the time, you kind of get the whole thing just in one pick. Whoa! Like that. Here you go. Ah. And so, big, <laughs> big blue oyster Wait, mushroom. this is so dense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You uh, take a big cluster of mushrooms uh -huh. and you shove like garlic in here, like whatever herbs you want, so thyme and rosemary, but you just kind of like shove it inside the cluster itself. Do you roast the whole thing? And you just roast the whole thing. So let's try the lion's mane. So I would just pick off Pick off one of those. Yeah, there you go. Lion's mane is so beautiful and so unique. And this to me is like the most otherworldly mushroom because it just looks like no other. And when you uh, you can take it apart, it like kind of peels sort of like mozzarella. It's so or, like, crazy. A lot of people use it as like a shellfish replacement. Um, which Cause is you can pull it like so yeah, it's almost you can stringy. Pull it. Next, we harvested yellow oyster mushrooms, which were more delicate than their blue cousins. They'd be perfect in a creamy soup. But even Andrew has a favorite fungi. I love trumpets so much, and so if you cut it, uh, this isn't the best knife skills, but you can cut them like this, and then you can have a nice scallop. Yeah. And these are probably the most popular for people who are trying to like imitate meat with a whole mushroom. And so the other mushrooms can give you the texture and the flavor and nutrition and all that kind of stuff, but these can like really stand in as a fake scallop or a fake bacon. Why do you want people to eat more mushrooms? I mean, they're, they're great for you. There's a lot of nutrition. They're high in fiber, they have amazing antioxidants, they have vitamin D. And what I really like about them is that they have that umami and that experience that replaces meat. I already eat a lot of mushrooms, but I'm convinced now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Local media Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Smallhold got me excited to try something with my new favorite fungi. So I invited mushroom enthusiast, James Beard award-winning chef, my friend Sophia Rowe to my kitchen. Hi! My friend, Sophia, I told you this before, that we are talking about mushrooms, and I was like, listen, I can't do this without Sophia. Talk to me about the role that mushrooms play in your work and in your world. I went to culinary school, and I was sort of kind of playing in that plant-based world, and I felt like fungi and mushrooms were a really great way to encourage a lot of depth, which I feel like in plant-based cooking, sometimes you kind of lose, you know? you Like meat and dairy, those things create a lot of depth. It's pretty remarkable the types of flavors that you can create. And this is not a new idea. They're, particularly in Asian cultures, they've been using different kinds of fungus for forever um, in their cooking. But for me, that was really when I was like, okay, this is sexy. Can you just talk to me about how you work with them? It's almost about like, what am I trying to create? You know, if someone's a very big meat person and they want to go plant-based for a minute or for a meal, I think it's really important to cook things in the same way that you cook meat, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And I don't even know that that's just mushrooms or just fungi, right? A lot of times with steaks, you're braising, you're roasting, you're searing. There's no reason you can't treat plants the same way. I'm, I'm just super excited to know what we're cooking today. Yes. Tell me about the dish and yes. uh, put me to work. All right, so what we have here is lion's mane. When I'm looking for uh, a lion's mane, you want them to be kind of fluffy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've been touching this one a lot. You don't want them to be slimy. You don't want them to stink. If they stink or they're slimy, they're no good. And that's kind of the rule, the general rule with any mushroom. Yeah. In terms of washing them, these are commercially cultivated. Mm -hmm. So they are not wild, these are not feral. So these are not gonna need to be like really, really washed. You just wanna, you wanna wipe them down, they're good. Do not get your mushrooms wet. They don't <laughs> like it. So this is a good one. This is a great shape. So what okay. we're gonna do is we're basically gonna make like a lion's mushroom steak. And you'll see that I've kind of like, as I'm even talking, I'm kind of pressing this. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like where, just for a second, we're kind of like trying to create like a little steak here, mm. like a little hanger steak. Why okay? are you using lion's mane here, Sophia? I think lion's mane is really delicious, mm. but it's great structure. So it's really great in terms of like replacing meat. If you can't find this, you can cook an oyster mushroom or even a big portobello in exactly the same method. Mm. So the, the key here is you're leaving it nice and whole. Okay. I kind of want to press these down. So I'm just going to score this one side. Okay. And why are you scoring it? So we want the flavor to get in, mm. doggy. We want it to be inside. <laughs> right, so we're gonna make this glaze. All right, let's so do it. Because we're attempting to make a steak, okay? <laughs> what we wanna do is we wanna help, we wanna help these lines made mushrooms along. Three tablespoons of vegan butter. If you wanna use regular butter, th that's, that's your you house do and that. do whatever you want. All right, we like, we like it softened like this because we're gonna be whisking it up. We want this to be like glazed texture. Okay. Okay. We also have coconut aminos. It's just like a soy-free, soy sauce vibe. <laughs> okay, I also like it because it's a little sweet. Yes, it um, is. And for a glaze, that's really nice. So the sweetness is important because the sweetness is gonna give us caramelization. So grab the sesame. Yes. Get it? Sesame oil. Love it. We love it. You could use toasted if you wanted, but this is just regular old sesame oil. Next up, ingredients to really up the umami factor. Miso, Dijon mustard, and tomato paste. We're gonna just get, some, get a good, like, salt in there right. and then you're just gonna whiskey do dude so this is gonna get I think we have this on medium heat okay okay we have some grapeseed oil here the reason we're using grapeseed is high smoking point we're using cast iron you don't have to use cast iron you can use whatever you have um, so we're going um, score side down. down so what's gonna happen we're yeah gonna put them on we're gonna get a good sear on each side and then we're gonna brush our glaze on okay okay two minutes flip it two minutes 
Then we're gonna take them off and we're gonna let them rest. Just like you would have Just stayed. like me. Just like me. Crazy. We're gonna treat these just like me. I love that. This is why we want this hot. Love it. Just drop it <laughs> down. What we can do here, this is like a little like a little tip too. You can mm. always just like just like button it down. Yeah, same, same, like same you would we do. I'm sorry, do you have a SoundCloud? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. So just, just, just to kind of encourage again, you want to yep. encourage that flattening, right? Yep. Get it nice and thin, I and that way that. The, 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 the marinade is not having to penetrate so deep. You know how to make a steak, you know how to do these mushrooms. After three minutes, time for a flip. Look Wait. It, look it. Oh. Gorgina. So we're just going to brush <laughs> this on, almost like you're basting a steak or something. Oh. Come on, baby. Everything about this feels like you are Van Gogh and I am your apprentice. Oh my God. You, but except you could do this, but you see I the could. sizzle and the, you know? So what's gonna happen is these are gonna be sitting here. They're gonna be caramelizing. They're gonna be getting juicy. We're gonna take the rest of this glaze and we're gonna baste them a little bit. Ooh. So this is, this. the basting method is never gonna be bad. It's always gonna be good. I mean, look how gorgeous that looks. It's beautiful. It's, I mean, stunning. A few more minutes in the pan. Uh, Literally crazy. Crazy, right? It kind of looks like me, too. Uh -huh. These are gonna rest, okay? Okay. It's five minutes, he doesn't need, okay. not Nothing trying to, crazy. Like, nothing wild. As the mushrooms rested, Sophia chopped up some green onions for later. Then it was time to cut into the lion's mane steaks. It's meaty, Can we dog. show them? <laughs> like, they need to know. That looks Everyone really alert. meaty. Alert. <laughs> but even like, it almost, it's almost like, like you wouldn't really know. It kind of, it just looks like mm -hmm. chicken. Sophia recommends serving the steaks over rice with a few garnishes. First some sesame seeds, then chili crisp, then scallions. Just like me, Sophia loves a little spice. Come on. Mm. It's so good. Wait, this is, mm. this is literally the best mushroom dish I've, literally ever had. Mm, it's so good. I love it. It is an unfamiliar ingredient mm. cooked in a familiar format. Correct. So I think if you're a beginner to mushrooms, mm. a really great thing to do is whatever you can find locally, just try cooking those mushrooms, whatever they are, in mm. this format. Mm. Try cooking them this way. Yeah. And you're gonna get a completely new relationship to mushrooms. Also, for the people who are like, I hate mushrooms, just Give the method a try, mm -hmm. right? I feel like we have to take a photo. Let's do it. Because like, when have we ever done a little friend cooking sesh? Let's do it. We need to do it. We need a whole photo shoot. We need a, we we need a whole photo shoot. <laughs> I love you, wait, give me a hug. Thank you for coming. Of course. <laughs> Sophia's lion's mane steak looked a lot like chicken, but one company in Colorado is completely transforming mushroom roots into an actual meat substitute. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Meat substitutes are everywhere these days, and they're made with a wide variety of ingredients, from whole veggies to soy protein and different oils. Enter Meaty. Here in Boulder, Colorado, mushrooms are the main attraction, and I got an exclusive first look inside their new factory. Meaty isn't trying to replicate ground beef. They're mimicking whole cuts of meat, like steak or chicken breast. It's like a super meat. Yeah, it's a where, super meat. <laughs> where it has all the protein you would yeah. want from meat. And then all the fiber and vitamins and minerals you find in plants. Yeah. CEO Tyler Huggins founded Meaty in 2016 after earning his PhD in environmental engineering. Tell me your journey to Meaty and why you started this company. Well, let's start off with, with meat. We, uh, we have a growing population, have a high demand for protein. Meat is, is a growing demand. Given my history uh, studying nature, I knew there was this really cool, magical, root-like structure in the soil. Biologists call it mycelium, we call it mushroom root. Tyler and his team developed a patent-pending process that turned the fuzzy, hair-like mycelium strands into a product that mimics the taste and texture of meat. Unlike mushrooms, you won't find the raw roots in any grocery store. Currently, Meaty sells a steak-like filet and a faux chicken cutlet that's available plain or with a crispy breading. And this is the place where it all comes together. This is it. This is where the magic happens, right here. This is the future of food. The mushroom roots are grown inside these giant tanks. This is this, where Meaty is grown, We right? essentially take one spore. Yep. It's like the fungi equivalent of a seed. Okay. We start growing up the mushroom root, and then we throw it into this, into this tank. The tank is filled with water that's packed with nutrients mushroom roots need to thrive. And how long does it take to cultivate and grow and harvest meat? Extremely fast. In this facility, we're able to create the meat equivalent of a whole cow in just four days. So tell me how you replicate the texture of traditional meat. It all starts from the magic of this mushroom root. We grow it in-house in a clean uh, environment, so no exposure to heavy metals or pesticides wow. or herbicides or anything like that. At that state, it kind of looks like uh, applesauce. This is meaty in the raw form before it's processed. And when you form it into a, uh, a chicken breast-like shape or a steak, mm -hmm. those strands become the texture that is very similar. Again, eats just like traditional meat. You can eat it just like that. That's just all natural mushroom root. I'm gonna you eat it. <laughs> okay. It's a blank it's, canvas. It really tastes like, I don't want to say nothing because yeah. there is like a little bit of something, but it is so, like you could throw flavor and spice on that. Including mushroom root, Meaty's Chicken Swap has just four ingredients, salt, natural flavoring, and acacia gum, a fiber used as a food stabilizer. But I had to know, is it healthy? So one of our, our four ounce uh, steak has about 18 grams of protein. And then it has all the fiber and other vitamins and minerals you only find in plants. No cholesterol, no saturated fat, there's no sugar in it. Meaty is now available online, but it often sells out fast. Really fast. The company is opening a second farm to meet demand, and Meaty will soon be available on supermarket shelves. What is the future of Meaty? We see there's a lot of interest in alternatives to traditional meat. But what we're doing differently is whole food protein, simple ingredient lists, super nutritious, and whole cuts. I think that opens up an entirely new demographic and group of folks who, who are excited to embrace something like this. After hearing so much about these mushroom roots, I wanted to see how it really tasted. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. In Boulder, Colorado, the folks behind Meaty are turning mushroom roots into a new meat substitute. At the factory's test kitchen, they're experimenting with the best ways to cook it. I met with Debbie Downing, the company's head research chef, to learn more. I'm so excited to try this. Will you show me how to cook it up? It's the mushroom root, right? Right, right. When you think about cooking mushrooms, it likes to soak up that oil, soak up the sauce. Super porous, yeah. Soak up anything that you give it. So best practices for our product is that we actually want to add oil to it first. Right. We want to just give a little bit of a drizzle here. Season with salt and pepper, a little oil in the pan, then time for the cutlet. All right, it's ready. Oh yeah. Sizzles really nicely. The chicken and steak both take about eight minutes to cook. Just like meat, the goal is to develop a nice sear for more flavor. I think it's ready All right, to flip. ready? Yeah. Woo! I just gasped. I haven't eaten chicken in a while. Yeah. I used to, so I know what chicken tastes like. Yeah. But I haven't cooked it in forever. And first of all, this is like very similar in cook. Like when you look at the browning yeah. and the caramelization around the edges. Like, did you want to cut it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like kind of freaking out right now. Get into it. I know, I know. Sorry, Tyler. I'm just like, just I'm processing. I can't get over how much it smells like chicken. And even looking at the texture, I'm going to pick it up and just show you. Oh my god, I just touched it for the first time, too. It's like the, the texture of it, of animal protein that you would normally see. I feel like it has that. But how? That's the mushroom root, right? The fibers. That's the mycelium. Yeah, gives you that texture and that look. This is not chicken, but it really looks like it. OK, I'm going to taste it. Should I taste it? This is your first time, I'm like yes. stressed. Okay. <laughs> is there a mic I can drop? This is like taking me back to when I used to eat chicken. Literally. And I'm not just saying this as I'm on camera. Next up, the steak filet. All right, steak. I'm trying it. Do you need another mic to drop? I need another mic to drop. This is insane. Yeah. This tastes like red meat. I haven't had chicken nuggets in years, so I was really excited to try the crispy chicken. This kind of takes me back to days of like growing up and eating fried chicken. chicken this is, am I getting punked? <laughs> <laughs> Got you. But I wasn't done eating yet. The meaty team had a big surprise for me. Shut up! I'm leaving. <laughs> I see my book. Yep. This is from my book. I didn't know I was going to eat chicken and cry today. My masala mac and cheese and cabbage salad from my cookbook both got the meaty treatment with their chicken. I was so excited. Also on the menu, breakfast tacos and steak in a chimichurri sauce. I even got to try some products in development, a turkey deli meat and beef jerky. They were delicious. This is not going to be cute. I'm just warning everyone now. <laughs> it is a pretty big sandwich. Mm. I'm taking this home. This. Wow. You guys are all like crazy magicians. Like something weird is going on here. <laughs> Whoa. That's breakfast. Yeah. In true meat fashion, we need to take a selfie. So yes. if you don't mind, yes. we're going to get in here. All right. Say meaty. Meaty. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yeah. This was so yeah. special. No, truly. thank you. I don't know if I can go on. My love for mushrooms has been cemented. From a delicious side dish to a show-stopping main, their culinary versatility is unparalleled. 
And that's what makes mushrooms truly magic. Listen, without giving away too much, mm -hmm. and I know you won't, what, what, is, what is NOPE about? It's about a lot of things. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the first notion that uh, I latched onto when I was writing this movie was this idea of, of making a spectacle, making something people would have to see. Right here, you are gonna witness an absolute spectacle. So what happens next? Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Here we go. And and I, I felt like I was uh, I was fighting for cinema. I was fighting for the theater theatrical experience when I was writing this film. So it's about spectacle. And from there, I, I, I explored that and started to sort of uncover what I think is like the dark side of our relationship with spectacle. You could make the argument, I watched it last night, you could make the argument that the film, at least on its face, seems to be about this idea that spectacle can consume us, does consume us, quite literally in, in some cases. Is, is that part of, of what we were going for? I mean, we are, <laughs> I like what you did. The, it, look, this is a society of the spectacle. And I think that uh, the, the, the idea of spectacle um, harms us in many ways, whether it's something we are so obsessed by that we, um, we give it too much power because it's, uh, it has a spect spectacular nature to it, or if it's because we use the spectacle to distract the, ourselves from the truth. We have this very, uh, very uh, dark relationship with it. And I, I, I think about bottlenecking, right? When we're, when we're driving, when we're in traffic and there's an accident, and that traffic slows down. Yeah. It's because everybody's sneaking a peek at that awful spectacle and it's slowing everybody down. And so that, I latched onto that and said, let's make a movie about that. This would be an opportunity. I'm talking rich and famous for life. There's plenty of videos for flying online. Ain't nobody gonna get what we gonna get. What we gonna get? We gonna get. The money shot. That's about human nature. Yeah. All my films are about human nature and about something that um, I fear is part of our DNA and, and scares me. And it's something that I share with us, but I, 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 I feel like it, it hasn't been sort of pinpointed yet. I, I read uh, in an interview recently that, that you, you maintain this is not a film that could have been made five years ago. Why not? Uh, I think there's, you know, a, a lot of reasons. You know, I think from a, a, a from, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, representation, I think this idea of, you know, letting a black director um, put his vision into a, a film and commit to it, and, and into a, you know, fly, the Great American Flying Saucer film. Um, you know, I, I let's just let's put it this way: five years ago, I didn't think they would ever let me do that. And so I, uh, and then even you know, on the on the technological front, yeah. you know, I worked with cinematographer Hoyt van Hoytema, um, who is absolute legend, and and some of the techniques we developed on this to achieve spectacle have never been attempted before and um and so I, i'm just very proud of what we pulled off in that way. a couple times i'm watching them I'm, I'm thinking this is expensive <laughs> this this is this is really expensive they gave jordan peele the checkbook and i'm like go do what you want hey you know <laughs> yeah i mean look that i i that that's an, another piece of this puzzle yeah. is that you know so much of my uh career before I became a director was, you know, marred with this, um, this uh, internalized sense that I could never be allowed to do that, that no one would ever trust me with, the, with money 
in you know enough money to do my to do my vision yeah. the way they would trust other people i just i felt that that was true and so here i am universal studios they, they've proven me wrong get out the, the social commentary on 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 race is is obvious um with this is wait. We have to wait for the um, the tram to go by. Yes, these which are is folks by the, who are going to be coming to see. This is monumental. This is what I'm about. This is what it's about right here. We that, right now, them over. they think that I John am. John Peel. Yeah, Mr. Peel. It's, it's his set. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. They'll come back next week. They come, yeah, they'll think I'm I'm an animatronic <laughs> that's just here, and they'll come back. So get out. Obviously, I mean the social commentary there on 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 race is it's pretty obvious. Do you find the being African American has more advantage or disadvantage in the modern world? <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. And I think you can make the argument that that us is sort of about uh, what human beings, like what we're capable of, the mm -hmm. sinister nature of, of our behavior. This doesn't seem to be as much about race. Is that is that by design? Yeah, you know, it's certainly not as much about Get Out, where you know the very fabric of the plot um, um, machinations were about you know this racial dynamic. You know, I I feel like it's impossible to make a mo movie with um, people of color in it and have it not be about race. I mean, hell, I think it's impossible to make a. a any movie without it being about race because, you know, race is all around us. You know, I think what what is interesting and, and sort of where the, the notion of nope and the title came from, which on one hand is, you know, something that black people recognize as our point of view in horror situations, is this acknowledgement that of this thing we're talking about, where this is this you can't have black people in a flying saucer film and just have it be the same experience. It's just, it's not, there's a, there's a different r relationship. No, 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 no. And this film is, is also, which is, takes place uh, in the outskirts of uh, Hollywood or the, um, you know, the, the industry of the spectacle, um, you know, is also so wrapped up with this idea of um, uh, representation and erasure, which, you know, those, theme, those themes are in there, but to your point, um, it, it, it's, an it, it's an adventure and a horror spectacle about, about human nature. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. From New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. I think you know, as we talk about spectacles, you know, it becomes abundantly clear that all the the themes and characters in this movie interact or represent the media in some way and uh, or some faction of mm -hmm. it. And uh, obviously the nucleus of the media I'm sort of examining here is is, is Hollywood mm -hmm. it, and uh, the selling of, of dreams, the selling of nightmares, the selling of illusion um, is, uh, is, is that, that's in the cornerstone of the piece. But it's not just an indictment of Hollywood. I mean, there, there, are, there are a couple moments in the film where 
it's sort of an indictment of, of, of us, yeah. of, of, of journalism. Yeah, yeah, any, 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 any time that we're going to make money yeah. off of the human need to see something crazy, mm -hmm. um, that to me is what I, what I call spectacleization. God. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a guilty p party, yeah. you're a guilty party. Um, we we, we kind of all are yeah. in some ways, whether what, whatever side we're all, all on it, and that's kind of the point. We are, by the way. Okay, here we go. This is a big deal. This is a... Because Jordan Peele yeah. has been memorialized. Memorialized? On the, on that, the, oh, I mean, on does the that way, happen after... You've got Jaws, you've got just, Back to the Future. Yeah, but I'm still... You don't still, have a lot of sets. I just... But I mean, well, that's true. That's, that's, that's a good point. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, like, no, this is a big yeah, deal. No, this is good. This is, this is, this, this is your set. Uh-huh. So this, uh, if I can tell you about the, the, I would the, love the space. Yeah. I know you saw the film, but uh, this is Jupiter's Claim, um, which is a, a theme park uh, owned by a former child star, a Ricky Juke Park, played by Stephen Yun. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is in the vision of the movie a Kid Sheriff that he was in as a child in the mid-90s. I don't know if you remember that film, Kid Share. I, I do not. Know. Okay, well, well it's real. It. Yeah. Um, and here we are. And and obviously, um, you know, it, there, there's there's more to meets the eye than here. So you know, if you're going to when you're going to see Nope, yeah. So there there is another layer um, <laughs> to to what happens here. You don't want to give away too much. Don't want to give away too much. But, uh, but you could make the argument that this is a centerpiece of of the film, the Star Lasso. Experience. We won't tell folks exactly. We won't tell people what happened. What there, happened here? But um, something did happen there. Something did occur. And uh, yeah, here we are. No, I mean, look, you know, it's a, a UFO movie. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's there is a you know something about this world that to, to juxtapose the sort of uncanny valley um, world of this of this um, th th this um, this sort of mom and park theme park. Yeah. Um, right in the middle of a uh, sort of UFO hotspot. Um, it was just the kind of juxtaposition that was, it was very me, I thought. If someone had said to you 10, 15, 20 years ago that Jordan Peele, one of his films would, would, would mm. have permanent space here on the lot at Universal, what would you have said? I would have said, well, then it would have worked. My plan would have worked. <laughs> This um, is part of the grand plan all along. I mean, yeah. Okay. You know, I don't. You know, I don't know if I knew to really dream this big, but I. But I did. I did. I mean, when I. You know, when I first came to Universal Studios as a kid, I. I was very enamored with um, the. I was just very enamored with movie making, and and the idea of being in a space where people actually make movies, mm -hmm. and I, I just want to. And and so. You know, to have a home on, on a, a lot, let alone this lot, is just very special to me. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good? Start today. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. Each other now. Doesn't it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? We're fresh and reorganized for fall. Start today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Michael Abels, uh, he, of course, scored this one. He scored Get Out. Uh, he's, he scored us. I interviewed him a few months ago. I've been a fan of his work for a long time. And he told the story of, of when you called to invite him on that first project. He thought you were punking him. Uh, what, what, what is it about Michael and his style that has led you guys to work together so much? Well, it's so funny that he thought I was punking him because I, you know, I really, I had never directed a film when I first reached out to him on Get Out. And what, what I loved about his style is he, he has an ability to create new genres of, of music. And he can do it many times. You can sort of describe a new flavor of music and he can achieve that. No! They took him. They took him all. I've gotta get out of this house. I'm trying to save you. My brother is out there. And uh, that's how I want my films to feel. I want it to feel like something you've never experienced. And so, you know, that, that's, that's what he does. He's like, he's like a, a, you know, he's like a Shaolin monk. Yeah. You know? That's a great, I mean, and masterful. Just, I mean, the music last night, you know, not to give away too much, but I, I feel like when you watch and you listen to a Jordan Peele film now, you know and that it's a Jordan Peele film. Like that's become one of the uh, of it. I love that. I it's love true. that, you know, it's, I spend a lot of time uh, just focusing on this responsibility of trying to be a, a mirror for what comes in, you know, and um, and so to to hear at the end people say that they they are, can see me in there in the cross section of these things they sort of see me. I, I feel like yeah, you, you do. Daniel Kaluuya, uh, you guys have become um, quite the dynamic duo. Uh, mm -hmm. We came to know him and, and get out. We see him again here. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about working with Daniel that, that makes it so special? Uh, Daniel, I, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. He's my favorite actor um, to watch and, and to work with as well. He, he, we have a, a, a special, I mean, I, I believe he has this with any director he has, has this with, but we have a, a, a shorthand that is just, it's just the dream as a director that you can have somebody and with very little words, it's like siblings, you know, very little words. We can come up to each, I can, we walk up after a scene, I can be like, you know that thing? Like, mm, what, that, that, yep, that, yep. <laughs> you know, it's like one of those silent conversations yeah. and um, he's just, he's so committed, you know, he's so, so focused, such a professional. Um, yeah, man, that's my, that's my uh, star. I want to talk about something. I want to ask you whether something informs your work and if so, how, how it does. You are a, a biracial man in America, white mom, black father. And, and some of the themes that we've seen emerge in your films, it would seem from the outside, it, it would seem to be that that, that worldview informs your movie making in a, in a somewhat pronounced way. Is, is that accurate? And if so, how? You know, I mean, my, my race, I think, has informed my entire artistic <laughs> uh, journey. And, and part of it has been trying to reconcile um, the box and the boxes that um, this, the country um, puts people of color in. And trying to break out of that box, what, those boxes, whatever, and trying to identify, what does this mean? What, you know, what, what? And so I think from an early on, you know, you see this pattern in my work, it is about, um, Digging into d digging into those boxes so I can shed them and break 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 out of them, and so you know ever you know ever since I kind of started on that mission, I got into this pattern of just like look if I see a box I'm gonna break it, if I see something I'm not supposed to do I'm gonna do it, <laughs> and I'm gonna figure out how to make it work. When people leave the theater, 
after they see this, this film, what do you want them to be thinking about? Not to think, but what do you want them to be thinking about? Mm. I mean, that's a great question. I, uh, you know, I mean, this is their turn. This is their time for their end of the conversation. You know, I think if I, if I had too clear of an idea of what I wanted them to be thinking about, um, I think I, 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 I feel like I wouldn't be having the, the conversation with the audience. You know, that's up to them. I want to hear, I want to know what they, like I said, I, I, I feel like with Nope, we, uh, you know, we, we described a, a feeling and we portrayed a feeling and we brought a sense of magic and adventure out of what was a very dark place and, and very dark time. And um, so I, I, I hope that they are, I hope they're just fulfilled yeah. and, and glad they went out to see it at an IMAX, which by the way, IMAX, you used IMAX cameras for this, I read. Oh yeah, we used IMAX cameras. Again, very expensive. Oh, very expensive <laughs> stuff. You can't just, you know, but it makes, it, it, it's, I think it's the best way to watch the film. Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, the, the, the format is just immersive. It is. The whole thing with me is like, I wanted to make a flying saucer movie because I just felt like if we can feel like we are in the presence of something other, Something, if we feel like that's real, then that's just an immersive experience worthy of, of going to the movies. When Get Out it came out, I read that the, at the time you said you had three or four more films like that. In the, of the horror genre, you had three of those, four of those, you had them in your pocket. But as you sit here now, you, you, you say there, there, there are more. So you weren't supposed to say it? Oh, you oh, say, no, oh yeah. I'm kidding. Did I, did <laughs> I give it away? Oh, no. No, you good, you good. <laughs> Look, I've got more. I, I'm not gonna have just one more film. Okay. I've got more now. No, of, it's- Of the horror genre. You know, it, it, it's funny, you, you bring up the horror genre. I would say yes, because I'm always gonna be having you know, scary things yeah. in my film. But I do like this, you know, uh, I, I do like expanding. And I, I like working with the comedy. I like working with the adventure. Yeah. You know, I, uh, you know, genre is a thing to subvert. You like to bend the genre. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because there were a few times last night where I thought, yeah, this is, this is, this is funny. This is thrilling. This is, do you consider this a horror film? Well, like I said, I, you know, I think it's, it's no. I, I, I do consider it a horror film in that horror is, it's my favorite genre and I, I hope it, 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 it honors horror. I hope it's scary enough yeah. to um, make people say, talking about nope. Um, you know, at the same time, I, uh, yeah, I want, I want people to feel some other things besides fear as well. Let's put it that way. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, 
download the NBC News app. It's hard to believe Kiki Palmer is only 28 years old since her acting debut in Barbershop 2 nearly 20 years ago. Kiki has appeared in more than 60 TV shows and movies. Kiki starring in Jordan Peele's thriller Nope. She plays Emerald, who may have captured footage of a <laughs> UFO, which she and her brother are hoping to cash in on. Take a look. We don't just go for the quick cash in, okay? We, we go to the most credible platform to do the story. What's that, like Oprah? Yeah, like Oprah, for example. After that, everybody want in. Well, I'm saying there's plenty of videos of flying online. I saw one the other day that wasn't on Oprah. I didn't say Oprah, you said Oprah, you love Oprah. Like all I'm saying is all that online is fake, low quality. Ain't nobody gonna get what we gonna get. What we gonna get? The shot. What shot? The shot, the money shot. Undeniable, singular, the, the Oprah shot. The Oprah shot? The Oprah shot, come on out, Kiki. <laughs> Thank you for having Congratulations. me. Congratulations. Good to give a little French yeah. moment. Okay, first of all, you're looking beautiful. Shout out to wife, uh, Wayman and Micah and Christopher John Rogers. Yes, he's such a talent and so are you. I got Thank to you. watch <sighs> this, this film, which had me like both <sighs> terrified and also um, laugh, yeah, laughing. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. First of all, Jordan Peele is a crazy talent. Yes. He is. But you are effervescent in this. Oh you shine gosh. so bright. What did it feel like to be part of it? Thank you so much. I mean, it feels so much fun. I mean, obviously, I'm a huge fan of Jordan, and this is like a different type of, of film that he's done before. Yeah. Um, the, the, the style yes. is just really unique, uh, but there's always this big, overwhelming message. So for me, I was just focused on making sure that I was able to, you know, do what I needed to do yeah. to get the story told. Yeah. Now, a lot of what's been pointed out about this film, it's that it's about what could be. How does this come out in this film? Oh, man, you know, I think that's the whole spectacle concept, right? right? Yeah. There's something that our, our, the two lead characters, myself and Daniel's brother and sister, they discover something in the sky. Yeah. And then they're on this journey, both for different reasons, of finding out what is it exactly. You know, Daniel's character, OJ, just is curious. And then my character's kind of like, what can we, how can we get ahead yeah. of this? How can mm -hmm. we exploit this? And through that journey, it's really just kind of more so an observation of how many of us in today's society are obsessed with outside things, yes. validation, exploiting, you know, yes. getting everything on footage, you know? Yeah. So, but let's be real. Kiki's in her backyard having a cocktail with her <laughs> homegirls, and she sees a UFO. Who is Kiki calling first? Honey, aside from talking to the girls that I'm with, yeah. I'm calling my mama. You know I'm on the Kiki Sharon on the line? Sharon, you'll never believe what I just seen. That's always what goes down. We have to talk about your mom. Uh, we have this picture of you all in front of the oh. Nope billboard somewhere. Oh my God. Hopefully. Oh my God. But also, I've read so much about how she sort of, there we are. Yeah. Like how she made you feel like you could do anything. Absolutely. My mother, uh, my family has, uh, they've been such a great support system for me. And my mom specifically, you know, she and I both were always on this kind of road together. You know, thick as thieves, yeah. uh, battling throughout every ups and downs of this industry. Yeah. And so just for us to continue to have these new moments, even after 20 years, I think it just, it, we're just feeling so blessed. I read your glamour cover story, which was so oh, profound because you beautiful. talked about saying no. Yeah. And the power of it. And, and we, yeah. and also like that you feel comfortable now being like, listen, like I'm going to put up my own boundaries. Yeah. Like how does that, how does that change? I think it could just get hard for us, right? I mean, especially as a child entertainer, you yeah. just always want to be so agreeable. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's a part and of a woman and you know what I mean? I think it's a part of maturing and saying, it's okay to say, no, I can't do this. And it's, it's, it's like a big part of self love and also knowing that you can give your best. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think that's the way that I help myself transition to understanding that it's okay to say no is that at the end of the day, all I want to do is do my best. And if I'm giving too much and I'm spread too thin, then how can I give yeah. my best? Yes. So that really made it easy for me to say, just say no, girl. Yeah. But how do you like, because I know a lot of actors in Hollywood think, go into it like this could be the last job. Yeah. Exactly. And yes. how do you get over that fear of like, if you take a break, that it's not going to come back? Well, I'll tell you, I think it's just faith. It's faith. Uh, you know, and that's something that we all are on our own personal journeys with, uh, whether it's a spiritual thing or just faith in yourself and to know that what's for me is truly for me. I remember there was something that Daniel said recently. I think it was a GQ uh, or Essence that he was talking to about how he had, you know, thought he was going to take a break from acting right before he did get out. Yeah. And he took that break and then 
he met with Jordan, ended yes. up doing Get Out, and you know, so I think it's, again, everybody should follow their instincts and know that if it's time for you to take a break, take a break. Just know that what's for you is always going to yeah. be for you. Yes. yes. And do you feel like, I mean, you said in, in this article that you're sort of in this next phase of your life. Yeah. Where you want to be with your nephews and your nieces, and you're thinking about, like, your personal life in a way that you've never thought about it before. Absolutely, because again, I started so young, and kind of the only, it, it's like a kid that starts doing football, you know, or, yeah. or basketball. Yeah. This is all I care about. Yeah. But then as time goes on, you, you, you get more interest. You think about love, you think about family, you yeah. think about, oh, I missed a graduation, or I missed the, mm -hmm. my, you know, so you start. <laughs> don't, no, Kiki, don't get baby fever on those kids, okay? So it's so true that yeah. you start caring about things that you really didn't, you know, you didn't yes. look at before. And I think, again, it's about balance. Yes. I think that's what I want more than anything in my life, you know, is to have the balance of, of all the things I want. Yeah. Ooh, so you're going to show us a picture of that man <laughs> in the commercial <laughs> break. Oh, my God. What you going to do, guys? Like? so oh my much God. fun. A big hello to everyone watching today all day. Hope you enjoyed the long holiday weekend. This is Pop Start Plus. I'm Joe Fryer filling in for Carson. On today's show, get ready to be transported to a European vacation. We're talking with two stars of the new movie, Love in the Villa. And yes, it takes place in Italy. After that, we're going to share our visit with one of our absolute favorites, Kenan Thompson. The SNL star is hosting the Emmys this year and updated us on his plans and his life. And later, a fun 90s look back with Hugh Grant. But first, his pop star. Let's get to it. We're starting off with Luckiest Girl Alive. We have an exclusive first look at the trailer for the upcoming best-selling book turned movie. It's based on the novel by Jessica Knoll. Mila Kunis stars as a woman who seems to have it all until her past comes back to haunt her. Take a look. I'm working on a documentary about the incident at your high school. There are still so many questions that you've never answered. People want to know, were you a hero? Or an accomplice? Imagine what it's going to be like when they find out about what happened. How could you not tell me about this? I carried this horrible thing with me alone for years, and it has built up this rage inside of me. Run, get out! Don't touch me! I don't know what's me. I'm what part I invented. Mm. Ooh, I want good. what I invented. Is that mm. what she said? That's oh. a dark one. I read that book Ooh. and yes. I don't remember anything that happened, but <laughs> I remember it being good. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Refresh your yes. memory. Wow. Um, you that can catch good. the full trailer on today.com. Mila will also join us on September 28th to talk about her role in Luckiest Girl Alive. Premieres on Netflix on October 7th. So there's still time to read cool. the book yes. before the movie. <laughs> All right, next up, Julia Roberts and George Clooney. The iconic pair is gearing up for the release of the upcoming movie, Ticket to Paradise. They play a divorced couple teaming up to try and stop their daughter's wedding. Here's a peek. I think your things are in my seat. Oh, sorry. Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. Excuse me, ma'am. I need to sit somewhere else. We used to be married. Worst 19 years of my life. We were only married for five. I'm counting the recovery. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking forward to that one. In real life, everyone knows Roberts and Clooney are longtime friends. The pair actually opened up to the New York Times about working together, joking that a single kiss between them took six months to shoot. It took 79 takes of us laughing, and then the one take of us kissing, Roberts joked. Ticket to Paradise hits theaters October 21st. That's going to be a good one. 80 takes. Can you imagine trying to do a kissing scene with one of your best friends? No. Like, that's just... And George Clooney is hysterical. Yes. Yeah, right? I couldn't even imagine. All right, next up. Don't worry, darling. <laughs> darling, we're going to keep the movies going here. The psychological thriller, it premiered at the Venice Film Festival last night, bringing together the biggest stars of the film, Harry Styles, Florence Pugh, and Olivia Wilde. They all hit the red carpet alongside their co-stars to promote the upcoming movie. Now, as fans wait for the movie's release, we all know that there have been rumors of a falling out between the lead, Florence Pugh, and director Olivia Wilde. Well, Olivia addressed, addressed the rumors uh, at a press conference yesterday. Take a look. I can't say enough how honored I am to have her as our lead. She's amazing in the film. And as for all the endless tabloid gossip and all the noise out there, I mean, the internet feeds itself. I don't feel the need to contribute. I think it's sufficiently well-nourished. <laughs> that's true. And that's that. Well said. Okay. Yes. Don't worry, darling. Hits theaters on September 23rd. Okay. Okay, next up, the NFL. We've been talking about it all morning. It's a big week for football fans, and we've got a lot to get to. So let's kick off with an exclusive first look at a new video from the NFL showing how the league is gearing up for this season. Okay. Welcome to the 103rd. Tiffany. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. We're trying to call out other people. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was that Tiffany Haddish? I saw Simone in that one. Well, oh. you're, you're not wrong, because they're all in it. Oh, Simone's who? in it. Oh. Lil Wayne's in it. Sweetie's in oh. it. Uh, they all teamed up for that legendary pep rally to celebrate the start of the season. If you want to watch the whole thing, wow. you yes, can, we do. go to today.com for the full video. I'm going immediately. And see that. It's fun. It gets you fired up. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. it's September now. Oh, yeah. We're ready for Let's football do it. season. All right, and also making his return to the NFL, Tom Brady. We haven't talked about him in a few days. Uh, the star quarterback opened up about his decision to return to football on his Sirius XM show. Let's go. Take a look. I just felt like I had a little left, and I want to give it a shot. And I owed it to my teammates and uh, our great coaches and our whole organization. We built something pretty special here in Tampa the last few years. The competitive fire still burns, and I want to get out there, and I want to have a great season for everybody because there's a lot of people that have supported me along the way. And if you want one more reason yeah. to look forward to the NFL season, yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. What? The He's rock returning? legend is set to take the stage during halftime at this oh. Thursday's season kickoff between the LA Rams and the Buffalo Bills. It's actually his first U.S. appearance and performance since 2019. Of course, you can catch the kickoff game. It's this Thursday right here on NBC. Wait, a halftime musical show? I mean, oh, the yeah. first game? Oh. There's more you need to know, starting with Andy Cohen. Everyone loves to show off their happy sun-kissed family photos after a good vacay. But our buddy Andy, well, he's keeping it real in a new video from inside the tough car ride home with his kids. Ben, you just watched Bob the Builder for six hours while I packed the car up. You can't want to watch more. We're going back to the city. You've been wanting to go back to the city. What? Okay, okay. Do you feel better now? Um, no. I, I see a cow. Well, you what? I was just kidding. You were just kidding. <laughs> wow. Ah, the many highs and lows of being three years old. Congrats to all the parents who survived this summer and cheers to going back to school. And finally, Leah Michelle, the multi-talented actress, is getting ready to take the stage as the lead in the Broadway show Funny Girl. Entertainment Weekly revealed these first look photos of Michelle as Fanny Bryce. As she prepares for her first show, Leah says she's over the moon and so nervous at the exact same time, describing the role as a dream come true. Leah Michelle's run in Funny Girl begins tonight at the August Wilson Theater here in New York. And that is the latest for you today. Coming up, the stars of Love in the Villa give us a glimpse into shooting in real life Verona, Italy. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. What would you do if you arrived for a European vacation and your Airbnb was double booked? Well, that's what happens in a new movie called Love in the Villa. And two of its stars spoke to the fourth hour's Donna Farazin about shooting in real life gorgeous Verona, Italy. This is the movie we all need right now. We need romance. We need Italy. 
I love that you two, you know, you actually shot the film in Italy. What was it like being in that romantic and historic setting? It's yeah. incredible. I think we both said, right, that it's the best filming experience we've ever had. I mean, it's just incredible. It was a dream. It was an absolute dream. There were so many locations, the people, the food. It was, it was magical. Oh, Who are you? Who am I? What are you doing here? I'm sorry, are you insane? You've just walked in here. Wait, jeez. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I rented this villa for the week. Look, I'll prove it to you. See, Julie Hutton, house and host. Nice to meet you, Charlie Fletcher. Vacation day. I mean, when I was watching it and the characters, you know, at first you didn't want to be together. I'm like, come on, these two gorgeous people. I would totally be like, sign me up to be overbooked with the, either of you two. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> would you, in real life, if you were overbooked in a villa, would you stay or would you go? I would put up a fight. I'd be like, you gotta go. <laughs> I'm gonna share with you after I just got dumped. No, I need space. <laughs> I, I'd probably like invite, I'd probably do what Charlie does later on and I'd be like, going, listen, let me cook you dinner. We'll go out, we'll have some drinks. You know, actually, what? because it's based on a true story because this actually happened to Mark Stephen Johnson. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It was based off like an event where he went to Paris and met uh, a woman in a, in, a, in a villa that was an Airbnb. But they didn't have a romance, but they yeah. became really good friends. They're still in touch now. Well, nothing beats the romantic aspect of it. Um, I think everyone dreams of this type of scenario for themselves. Would you say that you, Tom, are more of a Charlie then? I'm probably close to Charlie, um, sort of in the latter stages of the movie, yeah. I mean, I'm certainly not as rude as Charlie is early on. But uh, in terms of like my planning and things like that, yes, I'm, I'm quite sort of, Let's go with the flow. Don't worry about it. We'll just we'll just deal with it when we get there. Cat, are you well organized or more go with the flow? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Tom? Because I know. I know the well, answer. The best answer the question is you know. <laughs> she is Julie. <laughs> Well, you know what, Kat? Being Julie has gotten you very far in life. So congratulations. Compulsive successful is what I like to call it. Um, but I have since stopped planning as much and I've learned to go with the flow. I no longer laminate my itineraries and I don't use my journal every day. So I'm doing better and better and better, especially when it comes to my personal life. There's so many elements in this movie. There's heartbreak, there's falling in love, there's being independent. Do you have any lessons in heartbreak, in dealing with heartbreak or in dealing with not settling? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, Tom saying I am this character, it's not just the character. It's, I had a breakup. We got back together in Verona. This was years ago. My ex fiance's name is Brandon. Darren, my now fiance, is allergic to cats. There's there were things that were in that that the crew built in our actual villa. They had no idea it was the same thing I have in my house. There were weird things like that. Um, so, and I'm a spiritual person, so Me I think- Me too! I'm like, did you manifest this? What's happening? I think God uses my art as a way to get me to deal with myself or to teach me lessons, to deal with the things that scared me. If I could give anyone any advice, it's to just be open and stop trying to control everything and um, follow your heart. And it sounds really corny, but I've learned so much about allowing myself to just fall in love and, and be happy. Wow, Kat, I loved that so much. You know, it was so funny when I was watching the movie, I didn't realize at first, Tom, that your girlfriend was your wife in real life, Laura. Yeah. Sharing a screen and a set with her, I know that you've done this before, but in, in this romantic setting of Italy, like, what was that like? Oh my God, amazing. Um, just, I mean, it was the first time actually as well that we'd been away 
uh, together alone without our children for a bit. So to go away and do a movie together, doing the thing we both love was amazing. What are you most excited for people to see when they're watching Love and Vanilla? I think, well, you kind of feel that Verona is a hidden gem of Italy, actually, for most people. I think when people go to Italy, they think of Rome, they think of Milan, they think of Venice. And for me, Verona is the one. It's, I think I, I want people to watch it and go, oh my God, is that what that city looks like? How are more people not going there? It's still relatively quiet, so I also hope I don't destroy it by having more tourism there because it's kind of beautiful because it's not overcrowded. Um, but it's just uh, endless sights, like sight after sight after sight and view after view. It's just incredible. Pat, if you could describe Love in the Villa in a sentence or two, how would you describe it? It's a movie about conquering yourself and believing in destino. We should mention you can catch Love in the Villa on Netflix. Up next, the hilarious Kenan Thompson's visit to Studio 1A. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. Wake up each other now. Doesn't it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? We're fresh and being organized for fall. Start today. NBC News, streaming free now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. NBC News, streaming free now. Thanks for sticking with us here on Pop Start Plus. Kenan Thompson always brings a huge smile when he visits us here on Today. And during his latest visit, he talked about hosting the Emmys, SNL, and more. Kenan Thompson has been making us laugh for decades. Yeah, he first broke onto the scene, guess how long ago? <laughs> Kenan, guess. 30, 30 years oh, ago, starring in classics like Nickelodeon's that. All That Little and the baby. Mighty Duck movies. <laughs> the tiny, oh, and they're my favorite right there. Today, Keenan continues his reign as the longest running cast member in Saturday Night Live history. Next week, Keenan will take the stage as the host of the 74th Emmy Awards right here on NBC. Keenan. You know what Savannah and I have been singing? What's, what's up with that? that? Oh, yeah. Kenan, what's mm -hmm. up with that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Kenan, enough. The Emmys, what's, what's up with that? that? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. Good morning. Well, good, good morning. morning. So, good what do you do? How do you get ready for the Emmys? Um, a lot of like phone calls back and forth yeah. to figure out like what it's going to be. But uh, a lot of joke writing. Like the writers are like really writing a lot of jokes and trying to figure out who wants to do bits and stuff like that, you know what, what I mean? What do you mean, like other people are gonna join you? Yeah, like the famous folks, you know what I'm Ooh, saying? Like uh -huh. who's, who's down like to who? do something funny. Uh -huh. Whoever's in the room, you know, we've been reaching out to a lot of different people. Um, all my like SNL brothers and sisters that'll be in the building, I'm sure are gonna be down for, for, for whatever. Uh -huh. um, but it'd be nice for like, you know, the elders, like the Sudeikis of the world to, to <laughs> the do some stuff. The, the haters of the world, you yeah. know? Um, 
but also, um, you know, anybody. Like, like, I feel like, you know, we've been reaching out to people like Kamel and like maybe Lizzo and stuff I've been hearing. So these are all like, you know, unconfirmed, but hopefully confirmed okay. kind of like things. Well, after you mentioned Lizzo, we heard that you were hoping to do like a big musical number. Yes. Mm -hmm. How, mm -hmm. is, do you think that's gonna come together? It's coming together kind of oh. well. I mean, I think you kind of got to have some music in the name. You know, it's Grant's the Academy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you yeah, uh, something so grandiose. A, a little hint about what that might be? How um, that might look? What can the hint be without yeah. giving it away? Um, I, it, it'll be an, um, kind of an e eclectic gathering of tunes. If that, okay. If that's okay. A, a hint. Hint, hint, <laughs> you do, by the way, do you get nervous before something like this? You do live, obviously, you do live television all the time at SNL. Yeah, I feel it. I mean, I try to turn that, you know, nervousness, you know, wordage into, like, adrenaline mm -hmm. or something like that or, you know, testosterone. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel I feel it now, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, just knowing that, you know, it's Tuesday now and Monday is approaching and yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's just like always on my mind. So I'm just like ready to get it done. Uh -huh. Wow, well, you're going to crush it. Uh -huh. Full you. faith. Thank and then you. you have your, is it the 20th season, did we say, on SNL? Yeah, starting number 20. Oh, my oh gosh. My gosh. Like, crazy, right? So, like, what? You're staying power there. You yeah. Know, I think I saw you on the Smart, or you were on the Smart, smart List podcast, and you were like, yeah. I'll stay forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'll I stay mean, till you're 100. Will you? That's yeah. my mentality, you know? Like, it's just nice to be asked back. That, that's been this ongoing thing, like, who am I to deny them when they call? You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's such an institution, but you know, it's it's my home, you know, and it's it's nice to have stability in life. So <laughs> I just like, you know, keep, you know, just stacking all these clips and, and looking back on it. It's Come the on. best in these moments. I was just on Kevin Hart's podcast and we were talking about that sketch right there. Yeah. The corner boys. Uh-huh. And you know, I'm just working with a lot of brilliant people like the Mulaney's of the world, you know? So, how do you how do you know, like, how do you know how to do an Al Roker? Like, how do you even know it's how to do It's just what that? I, it's what I hear. Yeah, you know? so what do you hear? <laughs> and like my, my kind of like, you know, if he was projecting, that's what I would be taking away yeah. from it. <laughs> but he's just so jolly. I was asking where where he is a minute ago. I was I like, know. where is Roker at? Can you, you know, believe he just he's just got such a presence. Uh, uh. And he's just so, he's always smiling. So that just makes <laughs> me feel you. like he's just very giddy. <laughs> and he wants everybody to know what's going on in their neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. By the way, there's a, people love to write in and say, this is why I wish would be the guest host this mm -hmm. year, some special guest host. Yeah. Carol Burnett's getting traction. Oh, that Carol would be Burnett. amazing. She's never done it. Traction. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. What do you think of that? I feel like that's a crime. You yeah. Know? <laughs> know, you know, she's an, an incredibly brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, Carol Burnett actually presented me my Emmy when we won. That oh. was amazing. She was the, the uh, presenter of that category. And that was the first time I've ever even been close enough to even, like, Mm -hmm. Imagine touching Carol Burnett. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was an amazing Wait, moment. We gotta so hit one she's got to do it. Yeah. yeah, you just got your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I sure did. How cool is that? Wow. Gold star for the kid. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was an incredible moment. It really was. Like Meaningful? very touching. Whole family. Yeah. Leslie came out. JB came out. The babies were there. The it, was, girls. it was the best. Yeah. It was. It was a great day. Yeah. Was, it was. It was. It was crazy to witness something like that and still feel so young, you know yeah. what I mean? It, it seems like such a end of the road kind of thing. I heard your neighbors but, with Lauren Michaels on the on the Walk of Fame. Right next, he was right next to That's him. cool. Like, that's so crazy. Like we had, you know, half of his name covered up because of the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it felt slightly disrespectful. <laughs> but yeah, that it, it's, it's just wild to, to think about, you know? Oh. Gotta love Keenan. And we should mention you can watch him as your Emmys host coming up on Monday night at 8 o'clock, 7 central on NBC. Next up, we're traveling back to the 90s with Hugh Grant. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is happening now. 
look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Any Notting Hill fans out there watching? The 1999 romantic comedy star Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant. And in honor of Grant's 62nd birthday this week, a little something from the vault. His visit to today, all about the film. Hugh Grant, good morning. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. So this teams you up once again with the screenwriter and producer from Four Weddings and a Funeral. That's right, yeah. Was it nice? Was it a nice reunion? Nice to be back with those people? Uh, well, it was. It was like getting back into a warm bath, you know, after uh, years in the wilderness of people, you know, giving me not such great uh, romantic comedies. And suddenly to have this great writing again was, uh, was fabulous. But um, having said that, it was very scary because suddenly... It's a much bigger budget. I was going to say, a and, much, uh, much, much bigger budget, well, right. right? And partly because we have this actress called Julia Roberts in it. Uh, which, who? Someone called Julia <laughs> Roberts. She's good. You watch out for her. She's, she's going to be big. And, um, you know, obviously everything suddenly becomes a different kind of ball game. So it's scary in that way. The uh, idea apparently came from screenwriter Richard Curtis's brain. He was uh, <laughs> staying up one night thinking about what it would be like to suddenly have these two worlds collide, the, the most famous person in the world, which seems really right for a movie because so, society is so obsessed with celebrity right now. Yeah. Get together with somebody who really doesn't have a clue about popular culture, right? That's right, a non-entity and a rather sort of, um, as you say, naive non-entity. When you heard about this, this plot, I know that Julia said that she thought, I don't think this is such a hot idea. What did you think when you heard about it? Uh, no, I think that's a, a fascinating idea. I've always wondered, uh, you know, if that can really happen. A very ordinary kind of guy falling in love with a very, very famous woman or, or the other way around. And um, I think a lot of people are fascinated by the prospect of that. You know, would the spark or just the basic charm or whatever that chemistry is, can that vault over this great divide in, in, in terms of, you know, celebrity? And uh, I like to think it can. And Richard, who wrote the script, hates me telling this story. And in fact, I'll get into trouble for telling it again now on national television. But it, it did happen to a friend of his who was just an ordinary English guy shopping in Harrods, big department store in London. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, know I never know what people know. I mean, I know what you know. It. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. A lot of people know um, that. So. And who met an unbelievably famous person whose name I can't reveal. Oh, come and on. Ended up, <laughs> no, that's why it's a sort of boring story as well as a naughty one. Uh, and ended up having a, a fling with, with her. And that became the basis or the germ of this film, I think. What was it like working with Julia Roberts? Were you at all intimidated at the prospect, or did you all get on immediately? No, I think we were all terrified, um, especially me. I mean, I had met her many years ago and, uh, when she was going to do a film in London, and I was a sad, unemployed actor. And, um, I was one of many sad, unemployed actors who she rejected, threw away like so much trash for this film. But uh, we got on very well at that thing. And, uh, I knew it would be all right in the end in this film, but I, it, didn't make me, it didn't stop me from being unbelievably nervous when she first showed up. I was talking to her about the other actors uh, in the film, too, and uh, how important they really are to the whole mood yeah. of the movie. Um, were, were these people, she didn't know any of them before this film because right. they're all British, but were these people you knew or had worked with at all? Or? Um, I hadn't worked with them, but I knew who they were because they're all big uh, TV stars in England. Or yeah, you know, well known in, in, in England. And uh, as you say, they're very important to the whole thing. It's like Four Weddings and a Funeral was like a sort of ensemble piece up to a, up to a point. And uh, Richard Curtis, the author of the piece, is very keen on friendship and on, um, I don't know, just on a whole sort of bedrock of, of good supporting characters. And there's some hilarious performances. The guy who plays my uh, flatmate, my roommate in this, is uh, particularly hilarious. He is very funny, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. Um, you know, some people have said, here's Hugh Grant, once again playing Hugh Grant. I mean, you've heard <laughs> this a million times, Hugh. And, mm. and, and it must be frustrating for you to, to read that or hear that. You know, well, once again, he's playing <laughs> the affable, bumbling, romantic, right, lovable, right. shy, self-deprecating person. Yeah. What do you think when you, when you hear that or read it? 
Well, you're right. It is vaguely frustrating. I mean, because to anyone who actually knows me, um, I'm not that person. I'm, I'm a lot nastier than that. Uh, <laughs> Plus, in, in fact, between... I mean, for years, I, I, all I did was villains um, for all the way through the 1980s. And in these kind of situations, these interviews, people would say, why do you always play villains? Why are you always the same thing? So I think people like to hang you on a hook as an actor. It just so happens Richard's written two parts, which are actually rather like him. He's the author. And I just sort of ape him. And those two happen to have been the most successful that I've done. And there you have it, today's Pop Start Plus. And as always, we'll have much more for you tomorrow. Until then, take care. But this then, is crazy. Yeah. This is like, it's like a, the best floral arrangement I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. I love mushrooms. I mean, I really, really love mushrooms. They are an essential part of a plant-based lifestyle because they're such an easy swap for me. But I've got lots of questions about fungi. How do they grow? Where do they grow? And which types have the most unique texture? I'm gonna learn all about their culinary range with chef and mushroom enthusiast, my friend, Sophia Rowe. Then I'll travel to Colorado to see how mushroom roots are being transformed into a hearty new protein. But first, I want to learn some basics. So, I'm heading out to Smallholds, an innovative farm in Brooklyn, New York. Let's go. When you think about mushrooms, you probably think of those capped little fungi. But there are literally thousands of edible mushrooms out there. And no, I'm not talking about that kind of mushroom. A lot of people think that they don't like mushrooms because they're used to eating the same mushroom and they think all mushrooms are the same, but they're not. It's like saying you don't like mushrooms is like saying you don't like plants. Um, like, a, like the differences between a trumpet and an oyster and a button mushroom, it's like saying like an almond tree versus a head of lettuce um, and an apple. You know, they're very different. <laughs> Andrew Carter and Adam DiMartino founded Smallhold, an organic mushroom farm in 2017. They share a passion for rare mushroom varieties and want to bring those tastes and textures to more people. There's a whole kingdom out there and everyone's used to eating the same mushroom. A white and a brown mushroom and a portobello mushroom, they're all the same mushroom. That's right, white button, cremini, and portobello are all the same type of mushroom. Their scientific name is agaricus, if you want to be fancy about it. The industry grows those because that's what they're used to growing. Consumers are used to consuming those. You can look at other regions like if you go to China or Japan or Korea, the mushroom industry is way more advanced than it is here. It's so like consumers in certain regions are eating 10 to 20 times as much mushrooms as people are in the United States. So what were your first steps to starting Smallhold? The early beginning was uh, building out a lab in a basement at a house and it looked crazy. Andrew and Adam started experimenting with trumpet mushrooms. After perfecting the process, they expanded to shiitake and oyster. In just five years, that basement startup moved into a shipping container, then to their first farm in Brooklyn. The company has grown rapidly with funds from dozens of investors and a soaring demand for mushrooms. Over the last few years is that people really started getting interested in food as medicine, trying to eat less meat, trying to be sustainable, trying to eat local. All of these things ended up just kind of centering around mushrooms. In 2020, organic mushroom sales grew by 20%. Feeding that demand, Smallhold now grows 15 different types of mushrooms, producing a whopping 1.5 million pounds each year for hundreds of grocery stores and restaurants. Mushrooms are grown by a process called inoculation. A spore is placed deep inside a substrate, like a log. The spores germinate, then feed on the wood, growing into mycelium, or mushroom roots. 
This fruiting body is probably like four, four days, four or five days old. It takes about four weeks for the roots to be fully grown. That's when cute baby mushrooms called pins start to appear on the surface. In about a week, they're ready to harvest. Fungi are its own kingdom. They're functionally more similar to animals than they are like plants. They breathe in oxygen, they release CO2, they digest stuff, they don't go through photosynthesis. And so their interaction with the environment is just so different than plants. Traditional mushroom farms cultivate their fungi in mulch with a mix of hay, straw, and corn cob. But Smallhold is focused on growing in urban areas to make the entire operation more sustainable. City farms might seem strange, but fungi don't require a lot of light, water, or space to thrive. Our mushrooms, we grow, they're called saprotrophic mushrooms, and so they're wood-loving mushrooms. They digest wood. All of the substrates that we're using, that's the stuff that's inside of this block, about 90% of it is sawdust. Smallhold's mushrooms are grown in bags filled with a compound from mills and factories, so they're reusing a byproduct from the timber industry. And those futuristic containers don't just look cool. And so these chambers themselves have really intricate controls over all the climate that they're exposed to. That allows them to forego pesticides. Plus, the fragile mushrooms aren't susceptible to extreme weather. Can you walk me through the environmental impact of growing mushrooms? It's one of the most sustainable products you can probably find in the grocery store. We did a big life cycle analysis, which is a large like, third-party analysis to understand exactly what's going on with your company. Our carbon impact was about 30% less than any other mushroom farm we could find. Over 60% of the country's mushrooms are grown in one Pennsylvania county, which means it takes a lot of fuel to ship them across the country. So a lot of mushrooms are actually imported from overseas, and so the carbon footprint of those is really crazy. Smallholds mushrooms are grown in Brooklyn, Los Angeles, and Austin, Texas. They also operate over a dozen mini farms, custom-built tanks that can grow mushrooms inside restaurants and grocery stores. With farms in strategically placed cities, Smallhold plans to reduce carbon emissions by continuing to ship locally. When you're buying a product from Smallhold, like a fresh mushroom in a grocery store, it was grown close to there. And so we have a national brand, like you can be from New York and go to LA and recognize Smallhold on the shelf, but those mushrooms were grown in LA. Most mushrooms also have a naturally meaty texture, which makes them a great vegetarian swap. The more people eat these products, generally speaking, they're eating less meat, whether they realize it or not. And so every time we get someone to eat a little less beef or a little less chicken, then we think that we have a larger impact on the planet because it's less carbon intensive, less water intensive. Okay, Andrew, we're gonna harvest these mushrooms, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. We have uh, blue oysters, we have lion's mane, yellow oysters, and trumpet mushrooms. Um, but we can start with the blue oyster. Let's do this it. This one's pretty fun because, you know, you can't make any promises, but a lot of the time, you kind of get the whole thing just in one pick. Whoa! Like that. Here you go. Ah. And so, big, <laughs> big blue oyster. Wait, mushroom. this is so dense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You uh, take a big cluster of mushrooms uh -huh. and you shove like garlic in here, like whatever herbs you want, so thyme and rosemary, but you just kind of like shove it inside the cluster itself. You roast the whole thing? And you just roast the whole thing. So, let's try the lion's mane. So, I would just pick off. Pick off one of those. Yeah, there you go. Lion's mane is so beautiful and so unique. And this to me is like the most otherworldly mushroom because it just looks like no other. And when you uh, you can take it apart, it like kind of peels sort of like mozzarella. It's so or, like, crazy. A lot of people use it as like a shellfish replacement. Because um, you can pull it like. So yeah, it's almost you can stringy. Pull it. Next, we harvested yellow oyster mushrooms, which were more delicate than their blue cousins. They'd be perfect in a creamy soup. But even Andrew has a favorite fungi. I love trumpets so much, and so if you cut it, uh, this isn't the best knife skills, but you can cut them like this, and then you can have a nice scallop. Yeah. And these are probably the most popular for people who are trying to like imitate meat with a whole mushroom. And so the other mushrooms can give you the texture and the flavor and nutrition and all that kind of stuff, but these can like really stand in as a fake scallop or a fake bacon. Why do you want people to eat more mushrooms? I mean, they're, they're great for you. There's a lot of nutrition. They're high in fiber. They have amazing antioxidants. They have vitamin D. And what I really like about them is that they have that umami and that experience that replaces meat.
I already eat a lot of mushrooms, but I'm convinced now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Rumi Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Smallhold got me excited to try something with my new favorite fungi. So I invited mushroom enthusiast, James Beard award-winning chef, my friend Sophia Rowe to my kitchen. Hi! My friend, Sophia, I told you this before, that we are talking about mushrooms, and I was like, listen, I can't do this without Sophia. Talk to me about the role that mushrooms play in your work and in your world. I went to culinary school, and I was sort of kind of playing in that plant-based world, and I felt like, Fungi and mushrooms were a really great way to encourage a lot of depth, which I feel like in plant-based cooking, sometimes you kind of lose, you know? You, like meat and dairy, those things create a lot of depth. It's pretty remarkable the types of flavors that you can create. And this is not a new idea. They're, particularly in Asian cultures, they've been using different kinds of fungus for forever um, in their cooking. But for me, that was really when I was like, okay, this is sexy. Can you just talk to me about how you work with them? It's almost about like, what am I trying to create? You know, if someone's a very big meat person and they want to go plant-based for a minute or for a meal, I think it's really important to cook things in the same way that you cook meat, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I don't even know that that's just mushrooms or just fungi, right? A lot of times with steaks, you're braising, you're roasting, you're searing. There's no reason you can't treat plants the same way. I'm, I'm just super excited to know what we're cooking today. Yes. Tell me about the dish and yes. uh, put me to work. All right, so what we have here is lion's mane. When I'm looking for a, a lion's mane, you want them to be kind of fluffy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've been touching this one a lot. You don't want them to be slimy. You don't want them to stink. If they stink or they're slimy, they're no good. And that's kind of the rule, the general rule with any mushroom. Yeah. In terms of washing them, these are commercially cultivated. Mm -hmm. So they are not wild, these are not feral. So these are not gonna need to be like really, really washed. You just wanna wipe them, wipe them down, they're good. Do not get your mushrooms wet. I don't <laughs> like it. So this is a good one, this is a great shape. So what okay. we're gonna do is we're basically gonna make like a lion's mushroom steak. And you'll see that I've kind of like, as I'm even talking, I'm kind of pressing this. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like where, just for a second, we're kind of like trying to create like a little steak here, mm. like a little hanger steak. Why okay? are you using lion's mane here, Sophia? I think lion's mane is really delicious, mm. but it's great structure. So it's really great in terms of like replacing meat. If you can't find this, you can cook an oyster mushroom or even a big portobello in exactly the same method. Mm. So the, the key here is you're leaving it nice and whole. Okay. I kind of want to press these down. So I'm just going to score this one side. Okay. And why are you scoring it? So we want the flavor to get in, mm. doggy. We want it to be inside. <laughs> so we're gonna make this glaze. All right, let's so do it. Because we're attempting to make a steak, okay? <laughs> what we wanna do is we wanna help, we wanna help these lines made mushrooms along. Three tablespoons of vegan butter. If you wanna use regular butter, that, that's, that's your you house do and do whatever you want. All right, we like, we like it softened like this because we're gonna be whisking it up. We want this to be like glazed texture. Okay. Okay. 
We also have coconut aminos. It's just like a soy free soy sauce vibe. <laughs> okay, I also like it because it's a little sweet. Yes, it um, is. And for a glaze, that's really nice. So the sweetness is important because the sweetness is gonna give us caramelization. So grab the sesame. Yes. Get it. Sesame oil. Love it. We love it. You could use toasted if you wanted, but this is just regular old sesame oil. Next up, ingredients to really up the umami factor. Miso, Dijon mustard, and tomato paste. We're gonna just get some, get a good like pinch of salt in there. Right. And then you're just gonna whiskey do, dude. So this is gonna get, I think we have this on medium heat. Okay. Okay. We have some grapeseed oil here. The reason we're using grapeseed is high smoking point. We're using cast iron. You don't have to use cast iron. You can use whatever you have. Um, so we're going um, score side down. down. So what's gonna happen? We're gonna yeah. put them on. We're gonna get a good sear on each side. And then we're gonna brush our glaze on. Okay. Okay. Two minutes. Flip it two minutes. Then we're gonna take them off and we're gonna let them rest. Just like you would have Just steak. like meat. Just like meat. Crazy. We're gonna treat these just like meat. I love that. This is why we want this hot. Love it. Just drop it down. <laughs> what we can do here, this is like a little like a little tip too. You can mm. always just like just like, flatten it down. Yeah, same, same, like same you would we do. For I'm sorry, burger. do you have a sound club? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. <laughs> so just, just, just to kind of encourage again, you want to, yep. want to encourage that flattening, right? Yep. Get it nice and thin, I and that way that. The, 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 the marinade is not having to penetrate so deep. You know how to make a steak, you know how to do these mushrooms. After three minutes, time for a flip. Wait. Look it. Look it. Oh. Gorgina. So we're just going to brush this on, <laughs> almost like you're basting a steak or something. Oh. Come on, baby. Everything about this feels like you are Van Gogh and I am your apprentice. Oh my God, you, but except you could do this, but you can't the sizzle and the, you know? So what's gonna happen is these are gonna be sitting here, they're gonna be caramelizing, they're gonna be getting juicy. We're gonna take the rest of this glaze and we're gonna baste them a little bit. Ooh. So this is, this. the basting method is never gonna be bad. It's always gonna be good. I mean, look how gorgeous that looks. It's beautiful. It's, I mean, stunning. A few more minutes in the pan. Literally crazy. Uh, crazy, right? It kind of looks like meat, too. Uh -huh. These are gonna rest, okay? Okay. It's five minutes, he doesn't need to. Okay. not Nothing trying to crazy. Like, nothing wild. As the mushrooms rested, Sophia chopped up some green onions for later. Then it was time to cut into the lion's mane steaks. It's meaty, Can we dog. show them? <laughs> like, they need to know. That looks Everyone really alert. meaty. <laughs> alert. <laughs> but even like, it almost, it's almost like, like you wouldn't really know. It kind of, it just looks like Mm -hmm. Chicken. Sophia recommends serving the steaks over rice with a few garnishes. First, some sesame seeds, then chili crisp, then scallions. Just like me, Sophia loves a little spice. Come on. Mm. It's so good. Wait, this is, mm. this is literally the best mushroom dish I've literally ever had. Mm, it's so good. I love it. It is an unfamiliar ingredient mm. cooked in a familiar format. Correct. So I think if you're a beginner, to mushrooms, mm -hmm. a really great thing to do is whatever you can find locally, just try cooking those mushrooms, whatever they are, mm -hmm. in this format. Mm -hmm. Try cooking them this way, yeah. and you're gonna get a completely new relationship to mushrooms. Also, for the people who are like, I hate mushrooms, just give the method a try, mm -hmm. right? I feel like we have to take a photo. Let's do it. Because like, when have we ever done a little friend cooking sesh? Let's do it. We need to do it. We need a whole photo shoot. We need a, we need a, we need a whole photo shoot. <laughs> I love you, wait, give me a hug. Thank you for coming. Of course. <laughs> Sophia's lion's mane steak looked a lot like chicken, but one company in Colorado is completely transforming mushroom roots into an actual meat substitute. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just feel good to be back to school? Yes. Start today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just feel good to be back to school? Yes. Start today. Meat substitutes are everywhere these days, and they're made with a wide variety of ingredients, from whole veggies to soy protein and different oils. Enter Meaty. Here in Boulder, Colorado, mushrooms are the main attraction, and I got an exclusive first look inside their new factory. Meaty isn't trying to replicate ground beef. They're mimicking whole cuts of meat, like steak or chicken breast. It's like a super meat. Yeah, it's a where, super meat. <laughs> where it has all the protein you would yeah. want for meat. Then all the fiber and vitamins and minerals you find in plants. Yeah. CEO Tyler Huggins founded Meaty in 2016 after earning his PhD in environmental engineering. Tell me your journey to Meaty and why you started this company. Well, let's start off with with meat. We uh, we have a growing population, have a high demand for protein. Meat is is a growing demand. Given my history uh, studying nature, I knew there was this really cool, magical root-like structure in the soil. Biologists call it mycelium. We call it mushroom root. Tyler and his team developed a patent-pending process that turned the fuzzy, hair-like mycelium strands into a product that mimics the taste and texture of meat. Unlike mushrooms, you won't find the raw roots in any grocery store. Currently, Meaty sells a steak-like filet and a faux chicken cutlet that's available plain or with a crispy breading. And this is the place where it all comes together. This is it. This is where the magic happens right here. This is the future of food. The mushroom roots are grown inside these giant tanks. This is this, where Meaty is grown, We right? essentially take one spore. Yep. It's like the fungi equivalent of a seed. Okay. We start growing up the mushroom root, and then we throw it into this, into this tank. The tank is filled with water that's packed with nutrients mushroom roots need to thrive. And how long does it take to cultivate and grow and harvest meat? Extremely fast. In this facility, we're able to create the meat equivalent of a whole cow in just four days. So tell me how you replicate the texture of traditional meat. It all starts from the magic of this mushroom root. We grow it in-house in a clean uh, environment, so no exposure to heavy metals or pesticides wow. or herbicides or anything like that. At that state, it kind of looks like uh, applesauce. This is meaty in the raw form before it's processed. And when you form it into a, uh, a chicken breast-like shape or a steak, mm -hmm. those strands become the texture that is very similar. Again, eats just like traditional meat. You can eat it just like that. That's just all natural mushroom root. I'm gonna you eat it. <laughs> okay. It's a blank it's, canvas. It really tastes like, I don't want to say nothing, because yeah. there is like a little bit of something, but it is so, like you could throw flavor and spice on that. Including mushroom root, Meaty's Chicken Swap has just four ingredients, salt, natural flavoring, and acacia gum, a fiber used as a food stabilizer. But I had to know, is it healthy? So one of our, our four ounce uh, steak has about 18 grams of protein. And then it has all the fiber and other vitamins and minerals you only find in plants. No cholesterol, no saturated fat, there's no sugar in it. Meaty is now available online, but it often sells out fast. Really fast. The company is opening a second farm to meet demand, and Meaty will soon be available on supermarket shelves. What is the future of Meaty? We see there's a lot of interest in alternatives to traditional meat. But what we're doing differently is whole food protein, simple ingredient list, super nutritious, and whole cuts. I think that opens up an entirely new demographic and group of folks who, who are excited to embrace something like this.
after hearing so much about these mushroom roots, I wanted to see how it really tasted. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Jackson now weekdays at 5 on NBC News now in Boulder Colorado the folks behind meaty are turning mushroom roots into a new meat substitute at the factory's test kitchen they're experimenting with the best ways to cook it I met with Debbie Downing the company's head research chef to learn more I'm so excited to try this. Will you show me how to cook it up? It's the mushroom root, right? Right, right? When you think about cooking mushrooms, it likes to soak up that oil, soak up the sauce. Super porous, yeah. Soak up anything that you give it. So, best practices for our product is that we actually want to add oil to it first. Right. We want to just give a little bit of a drizzle here. Season with salt and pepper, a little oil in the pan, then time for the cutlet. All right, it's ready. Oh, yeah. Sizzles really nicely. The chicken and steak both take about eight minutes to cook. Just like meat, the goal is to develop a nice sear for more flavor. I think it's ready. All right, to flip. ready? Yeah. Woo! I just gasped. I haven't eaten chicken in a while. Yeah. I used to, so I know what chicken tastes like. Yeah. But I haven't cooked it in forever. And first of all, this is like very similar in cook. Like when you look at the browning yeah. and the caramelization around the edges. Like, did you want to cut it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like kind of freaking it's out right now. Get into it. I know, I know. Sorry, Tyler. I'm just like, just... I'm processing. I can't get over how much it smells like chicken. And even looking at the texture, I'm going to pick it up and just show you. Oh my God, I just touched it for the first time too. It's like the, the texture of it, of animal protein that you would normally see. I feel like it has that. But how? That's the mushroom root, right? The fibers. That's the mycelium. Yeah, gives you that texture and that look. This is not chicken, but it really looks like it. Okay, I'm gonna taste it. Should I taste it? This is gonna be your first time, like yes. stressed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is there a mic I can drop? This is like taking me back to when I used to eat chicken, literally. And I'm not just saying this as I'm on camera. Next up, the steak fillet. All right, steak. I'm trying it. <laughs> you need another mic to drop. I need another again. mic to drop. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. This tastes like red meat. I haven't had chicken nuggets in years, so I was really excited to try the crispy chicken. This kind of takes me back to days of like growing up and eating fried chicken. chicken this is, am I getting punked? <laughs> <laughs> Got you. But I wasn't done eating yet. The meaty team had a big surprise for me. Shut up! I'm <laughs> I've seen my book. Yep. This is from my book. I didn't know I was going to eat chicken and cry today. My masala mac and cheese and cabbage salad from my cookbook both got the meaty treatment with their chicken. I was so excited. Also on the menu, breakfast tacos and steak in a chimichurri sauce. I even got to try some products in development, a turkey deli meat and beef jerky. They were delicious. This is not gonna be cute, I'm just warning everyone now. <laughs> but 
this is a pretty big sandwich. Mmm. I'm taking this home. This. Wow. You guys are all like crazy magicians. Like something weird is going on here. Whoa. That's breakfast. Yeah. In true me fashion, we need to take a selfie. So yes. if you don't mind, we're gonna get in here. All right. Say meaty. Meaty. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Yeah. This was so yeah. special. No, truly. thank you. I don't know if I can go on. My love for mushrooms has been cemented. From a delicious side dish to a show-stopping main, their culinary versatility is unparalleled. And that's what makes mushrooms truly magic. to Wellness Today, I'm Chanel Jones. After a relaxing and fun-filled self-care summer, it's time to welcome fall with open arms and get back to a routine. We'll learn how getting organized can help with our physical, mental, and emotional health and may surprisingly assist in adding some spontaneity to our day. Then we'll share tips for keeping kids and teens safe as they get back on the sports field. Plus, today contributor Stephanie Mansour shows us how to make stretching an everyday habit. And for many, it's the favorite part of fall, football season. We'll show you a team with a twist. Whether you're excited to bring back habits that worked for you last year or create something entirely new, join us to be inspired to get back to routine. Whether you've learned from the likes of Marie Kondo or the ladies of the home edit, getting things in order can feel good. But did you know it can be a helpful tool to ease the mind and calm the nerves and can even help you focus? According to the Mayo Clinic, decluttering often contributes to lowering stress. So we met some folks who shared their insights on what controlling the clutter does for their overall well-being. Take a look. Here you go, Mom. Thank you. I do self-identify as a very organized person. I kind of just try to organize in a way that makes things make sense to myself and everybody else so that we can all kind of play a role. Jennifer Jessup is a Seattle area mom to four kids, ages seven, five, three, and one. Keeping things organized in her home has become a top priority for her in this stage of life. It's almost like everything around is screaming at me, like, put me away, or like, I, I need you to move me. So when everything is organized where it needs to be, it quiets that, and then I can just, I can just be. I think he wants to play with you, Cannon. I definitely find that if things are, in a sense, put away in a somewhat organized fashion, then I'm more of the fun mom. I'm not thinking about a thousand other things that need to be done. I can just be in the moment. Jen's emotional reaction to having her space organized doesn't surprise Jean Preminsky, a professional organizer who runs Seattle Sparkle. Jean hears from people like Jen all the time who are looking for ways to tame their cluttered spaces. When you are living in a place with a lot of clutter around you, it can be really distracting. It's really, really stressful. Jean's background as a glass blowing artist informed her passion for organizing. Glass is a very fragile, temperamental material, and you've got to be able to just reach down and grab the right tool at the right time. So there's a lot of planning and preparation that goes into glass that also goes into having an organized home. Jean recently published a coloring book called Color to Declutter to help get people in the right frame of mind for organizing their spaces and lives. I created a coloring book to help people get organized. It helps relax your mind. And when your mind is relaxed, then your external environment will be relaxed. If your mind is feeling chaotic, your external world is gonna reflect that. So by relaxing your mind, you are able to relax your environment. Although Jean offers a range of home organization services, certain jobs call for extra help. 
That's when she recommends her friend Alan Regala, owner of Shelf Genie of Seattle, a company that retrofits existing cabinets to help people get more organized around the house. We'll design it so it's more efficient, so you can actually probably store more items in your kitchen than maybe you do now. Easy access to everything. Alan has a background in mechanical engineering and has had a lifelong passion for organization. This is one of my favorite ones here. Uh, we have a glide out shelf for our water bottles. Organization is huge for wellness. Your overall state of being it allows you to feel more joy in your world because you're not worried. I think you can go on the other end of the spectrum though and be too structured and everything being 100% um, perfect. Finding that right balance to be happy and to have a low stress you know, environment but still be productive and know where things are at. And once we do find that balance, organization has the potential to make us feel more fun, fire up a creative spark, and make our days just a little bit more joyful. Now joining us to better understand the mental, emotional, and physical benefits of having an organized life is clinical psychologist, Dr. Jonathan Lasseter. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. I have to be honest, for years I've been talking about how I need to get organized, but I never really thought about the connection to the mental health benefits. I've always thought of it as just, you know, being organized is the right thing to do. But talk about the connection between mental health and being organized. Yes, so being organized has a lot of benefits for mental health. So I'm going to give you three. Okay. So one is less stress. Mm. When you are organized, you know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You can block out your time. And so then you're not thinking, oh, am I going to have time to do this? Sure. Oh, am I going to have time to do that? You know when. And so it decreases your stress. Mm. So also better sleep. Okay. So when it comes to sleep, again, if we're not organized, we tend to leave things for later and we end up and it's 11 o'clock. You're and right. We still have things to do, yep. right? And then I lay down and my mind is racing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. not only are you getting to bed later, once you're in bed, you're not sleeping as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So when you're organized, better sleep. Mm -hmm. Also, better health. So you can plan your meals better, which better diet, that right? That makes sense. Okay. And also exercise yeah. and things like that. So better health. So we know it. You know when the doctor tells you to do something, but it's another thing to actually try to implement it mm -hmm. from a physical or from a clinical perspective. Mm -hmm. Are there first steps that we can do to try to create a new healthy routine? Yeah. So as you know, I'm a clinical psychologist. So I always tell my clients who are struggling with this, start small, mm -hmm. right? So what may be small to you, though, may be large to someone else. So it just depends on the person. But start small. And I always say make a smart goal. S is for specific. So you want to be specific. So instead of saying, I'm going to work out, how are you going to work out, right? Mm. You want it to be measurable, right? So how long are you going to work out, okay. right? Action-oriented, realistic, mm -hmm. and time-oriented. Give yourself a time limit mm. to do that goal. Say, I'm going to do that before lunch. I didn't realize that being organized could help with being spontaneous. Yes. To me, it almost sounds counterintuitive, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm thinking, oh, I don't need to be organized. I just want to be free. <laughs> but if you're organized, tell me that connection. Yeah. So if you're organized, then it frees you up. Because mm -hmm. again, remember all that stress? You don't have that. Mm -hmm. Your mind can be at peace. Mm -hmm. So you not only schedule the task you have to do, but schedule blocks of time to be free and really be free. Really Wait, schedule that. your freeness, yes, so to speak? Yes, yes, yeah. because it, then it frees you up. So you're not saying, oh, I can't do this because then I, uh, you know, I'm going to run up against this time block or I'm not going to know when, mm. you know. So you sense. know when you're going to have your free time. Mm -hmm. So this also becomes something you can look forward to. But go down rabbit holes, explore, imagine. But being... Having a uh, schedule helps you do all of that. Is it possible to be a kind of person or is it possible to take it too far? Like, are there warning signs <laughs> if someone's too rigid, if you will, of with course, their organization? Of course. So the warning signs of being too rigid, anxiety. Mm. You ever meet those people? Absolutely. Right? Where they one thing goes wrong. And, and like, they can't oh, and deal. And they can't deal. Yeah. That is a telltale sign right okay. there. Right? Okay. So if anxiety comes about and they just can't let it go, mm -hmm. also if they can't move on to their day. So, mm. okay, so I didn't do this, so I have to do this before I can do it, and now they're behind. Okay? When the routine starts to become a hindrance and starts to create the anxiety that's meant to alleviate, 
you're in trouble. It's so interesting. There's a line in there somewhere. I don't know what it is, because I also know that you've talked about the fact that if you are organized, it can help if you have existing mental health conditions, maybe like ADHD or anxiety or depression. But if you're too far on the other end of the spectrum, it causes anxiety. Yes. Where is that line? It's all about balance. And again, that's going to be different for every person. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I work with my clients about. Where is the balance? So I always think about Function. Are you able to function in your life? Are you able to get the things done that you want to get done? And if you are, then that's where your balance is. Mm, and if not, then seek help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why we have folks like exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Thank you for all of your insights, Dr. Lasseter. Thank you. Coming up, tips for keeping the kids healthy as we fall back into fall sports season. And later, these high school girls are scoring touchdowns in a league of their own. All that and more just ahead on Wellness Today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just feel good to be back to school? Start today. NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Of getting back into routine is back to school and back to school sports. So if your kids have taken the summer off, you might be worried about them diving back in too hard, too fast and getting hurt. Joining us now is Dr. Jordan Metzel. He is a sports medicine physician at the Hospital for Special Surgery and he is going to talk to us about what you can do to help your athlete avoid injuries and what to do if, goodness forbid, an injury occurs. Welcome, Dr. Metzel. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. So let's dig right in. I mean, getting back into after-school sports, there are some kids who stay active over the summer, other kids not so much. So as parents, what can we do if we don't want our kids to get injured or go too hard too fast? Yeah, definitely. Say. So uh, yeah, violating the rule of two is too much too quickly. And mm. uh, back to school is a time, it's really our busiest time of the year in sports really? medicine by far. Oftentimes, people are less active in the summer with organized things. They may mm -hmm. go to camp. They're they're less, you know, less formally active in sport, and then they jump right back into school sports. Mm. And that disconnecting the body I kind of had over the summer and then yeah. jumping back into real sports uh, can be a real shock to the system. And so we, we really look to kids to work on, you know, doing a lot of preventive strengthening so they can stay healthy during this sport. And right now, particularly as school sports are kicking back up and the real thing, we've been kind of on a, a lesson schedule for yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah. So now we're back into like real official, the whole thing, fans, parents, kids, all sports going, which is wonderful for kids. Mm -hmm. But the downside of that is their bodies may not be totally up to it. So you got to make sure they're building back in slowly and building up enough strength. Hopefully over the summer, they were doing some strength training and conditioning too. It's so important. I think we just assume, oh, kids are kids. Let them just run around, let them go out there. And then when we talk about stretching, we think about adults, but clearly kids, it's important for them too. I keep reading about creating a healthy sports environment for kids. What does that even mean? I have two, three athletes and I don't know what that means. Well, here's what I got to tell you on that. So okay. basically sports should be for kids, the best time of the day. Like they should be looking forward to doing their sport. Unfortunately, we've seen you know, a whole trend towards specialization. Oh, you're a pretty good soccer player. You should play soccer year round. You're a pretty good baseball player. You should play baseball year round. And younger and younger, kids are getting shunted toward these specialized sports. 
And oftentimes that gets quite serious and sometimes it's very healthy, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not healthy. So when I talk about a healthy sports experience, I mean is your kids smiling, looking forward to going. They, might, they may not make it to Major League Baseball or the NBA or NFL, most kids don't mm. even make it to college for sport. But we wanna make sure we're giving them tools to have a healthy kind of experience and they want we want them to be like you. You look forward to exercising Absolutely. all the time because Absolutely. you have a really positive experience about that. So we wanna make sure they're smiling and you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that. You know, my kids play soccer and there are people who clearly, even my husband I have to watch because he played soccer. So he assumes the boys are gonna play soccer, right? And so I think parents have to be careful to make sure maybe their child actually really wants to play that sport. How can you, how do you know if a sport is right for a child? Well, it's interesting. I have this discussion with parents all the time in my office. Mm. And, you know, first of all, there's no such thing as a right sport. If your kid likes it, they're smiling, they're having fun, let them do it. Okay. But definitely there are some sports where as they get more serious about it, um, you know, they may get injured more often if they don't have the right body for the right sport. And, mm. the, and sports like you may think like ballet, for example, if you have a really nice turnout in your hips, um, you're made to be able to dance ballet maybe, but if you're trying to force that turnout from the That's floor because you don't turn out very yeah. well, you know, you can make it as a small kid, but as you get further up in ballet, you start to get knee problems and hip problems. So the thing I tell parents is if your kid is injured more than kind of 10, 15% of the season, if they have a lot of aches and pains way more than other kids, mm. it may be time to talk about Am I in the right sport? Um, and most importantly, are they having fun? That's really interesting. I've never even thought about that. And what about like if your kids are still growing? Are there some injuries um, or ways injuries in adults differ from injuries in kids? That's a great question. So uh, basically kids' bodies are, they're not just like small adults. Their bodies are growing and in their bones, they have these cartilage growth plates. Now these are plates of cartilage in the bone. And as they start to grow, these, these cartilage plates turn into bone and kind of like a brick. They lay down layers of brick on top of each other and that's how the bone gets longer. So if you roll your ankle and you're 16, you've sprained your ankle. But if you roll your ankle and you're nine or 10, you've fractured your growth plate and it looks exactly the same, but we treat them very differently. The growth plate fractures more serious. Sometimes it needs a cast or a boot and we so keep them out of activity. So the key thing for parents is recognizing that if something you know keeps hurting, you wanna definitely get it checked out. I was just gonna ask you how you can tell if an injury requires medical attention or if you can just watch your kid and you know take care of it at home. It's interesting, there's kind of two categories of injury. The acute traumatic injury, like it happens right away, I twisted my ankle, mm -hmm. I'm limping off the field. You don't wonder if you had that one. For those, if it's crooked, if it's swollen, come bring it in right yeah. away. If it keeps bugging him, you wanna get it checked out. But the other ones, the repetitive use injuries, I'm playing baseball and my elbow hurts because from throwing or I'm a gymnast mm -hmm. and my back hurts. For those, if pain is changing how you do your sport, meaning I can't throw the ball right, I can't do back handsprings because my back hurts, you wanna get that checked out as well. All right, last but not least, this is an interesting question. I feel like somebody's been spying on me. Let's say you're a parent and you're watching the game on the sidelines and your child gets hurt. So I learned the hard way that you're not supposed to run out on the field. <laughs> but it was like, it was my child. And he was like, mom, you know, and he pushed me back. But is there a line? I mean, some, you know, and he was fine. So that's when I learned, okay, let me let the coach Handle well, it. so basically, uh, you know, there are built in kind of ways that we take care of these injuries. You know, usually kids are pretty darn resilient yeah, yeah. and they get up, move around. You know, if there is a designated medical person on the field, you know, let them go do their job. Um, you don't want to be the overbearing person looking yeah. over their shoulder and running out mom. there. Um, but, you know, obviously yeah. your parental instincts kick in as well. All right, Dr. Metz, so you're so solid. And he's doing this and he still has patience. So he's got to run back <laughs> and take care of the patients. You're just doing that. You're such a giver. Thank you so much. Great to see you. So cheers to all of you for a fun, safe, and healthy sports season ahead. All right, coming up, add some relaxation to your day with five minutes of stretching. And then later, Donna Farazan is going to kick off football season with the New York Jets. Stay with us. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Even though settling back into a routine brings about a sense of control, it can also feel overwhelming and exhausting. Fitness expert Stephanie Mansour is here to help you unwind each day by demonstrating a few exercises to improve your flexibility and help you ease into or out of your day. Hey everyone, I'm your trainer and coach Stephanie Mansour and it's time to take a deep breath. You know, it's hard getting back in the swing of things, and as we head into fall, today we're gonna slow it down and relax with this full body stretch. I'll guide you through these exercises that you can do starting on our knees, so you don't even have to stand up like I am right now. This is gonna be a perfect way to wind down before bed, or just a great way to add some flexibility into your daily routine. So we're gonna come down onto the mat, and as a certified yoga instructor, I like to take off my shoes and socks and really get into the flow. So go ahead and join me if you want, and then we're gonna start kneeling on our mat. So coming onto your knees here, and sticking your legs out behind you. We're gonna inhale, reach the arms out to the side and up, lifting the chest, and then exhale through the nose as you place the hands down onto the mat. We're gonna inhale here into a cat and cow, and exhale to draw your navel in towards your spine. Good, let's do that one more time. Inhaling, lifting the chest, shoulders back, and exhale, abs in, stretching between the shoulder blades and along the spine. From here, we're gonna step forward into a low lunge, placing the hands on the opposite sides of the feet. We're gonna inhale here, lifting the chest, and you can also place your hands on your thighs if that's more comfortable. And then exhale, fold forward. From here, we're gonna shift back onto the heel, and you can flex the foot if you want, coming upright if that's more comfortable, or if you're more flexible, you can place your hands onto the mat, take a deep breath in, and then exhale, come forward into that low lunge again. Inhaling here, and exhaling, leaning back, flexing the foot, stretching the hamstring. Good, one more time, inhaling, shifting forward, stretching that front leg's hip flexor, and exhale, folding forward, dropping your chin to your chest. Good, we're gonna come back to center, and then we're gonna switch legs. So coming onto your hands and knees again, and then stepping the opposite foot forward in between the hands. Scooching the back leg back, inhaling, lifting your chest, and exhale, folding forward, flexing that foot. Good, and again, you can come up tall if that's more comfortable for you, or you can lean forward at your waist. Inhaling, walking forward with the hands, lifting the chest, and exhale, flexing the foot, rounding the spine as you shift back. One more time, inhaling through the nose, opening the chest, bringing the shoulders back, and exhale, flexing the foot, shifting back. And then come back to the starting position. And great job. You can do this routine in the morning to start your day, in the middle of the day for a stretch break, or in the evening to unwind after a long day. 
Thanks, Stephanie. Just five minutes a day to loosen things up. I think I can do that, and you can do that too. Plus, it's never too late to get moving. Join the Start Today community on Facebook or sign up for our newsletter to find others just like you who are getting stronger each day. All right, when we come back, Donna gets a lesson in how to play flag football with the New York Jets and the state champion high school girls team. That's just ahead. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Wellness Today. Football season is here, and 17.1 million fans are preparing to watch their favorite NFL team try to make it to the Super Bowl. 47% of those fans are women, but as of 2022, not one female will play in the 32-team league. That doesn't mean you shouldn't count women out, though. High school girls around the country are finding a new way to try the sport through flag football in leagues of their own. Today's Donna Farazan caught up with girls from the Irvington High School flag football team in New Jersey and the New York Jets to learn a thing or two about the sport. Ready, set, go. Strength, resilience, perseverance. Junior year, we lost in the championship, and I couldn't deal with that. So next season came, I was like, I had to win the championship. And not only did we win the championship, we went undefeated, no loss. Meet number one, quarterback Janasia Wilson. Number 17, wide receiver safety, Samaya Dixon. Number 14, wide receiver running back, Samaya Hill. Part of Irvington High School's girls flag football team, the 2022 New Jersey State Champions. I kind of feel like I have the city on my back, like it's your responsibility to deliver, which I mean like, we deliver. You deliver. We delivered. Motivating younger generations. I live with my little brothers and they're nothing but always by my side. They look up to me like, I go to practice, they're like, can I come, can I come? They want to play football, so I will go outside, play catch with them. My little sister will want to come and sit at flag football practices just to see her sister play the sport that she loves. When I come in the house, it's like state champ, state champ. So it's like that kind of energy, just like, it like motivates you. Sibling motivation, a theme that rings true with Jets players Quincy and Quinnen Williams. The way I started playing football was we got in an argument. So I was a swimmer. So I told him, like, one day my gold medals are going to be worth more than his tackles. <laughs> Come find out. His sacks are worth more than my gold medals right now. And I started playing football as I kept going, and I was just like, you know, I can really make this a thing. That's amazing. So your love of family was really what drove your love of football. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a sister. It's three boys and one girl. And she used to always play football with us, like, in the backyard, so it could be two on two. What does she think of your involvement with the program? Well, I was at the football game and I had FaceTime and she was like, man, I would have been dumb if, I, if they had that when I was young. An opportunity offered by the New York Jets and Nike Girls High School Flag Football League. That grew from eight teams to over 40 in just one year. What is your hope for the future of this program? 
So I just hope more and more girls get a chance to display their abilities. Like, we get a chance to display our abilities every single Sunday. Now there's not a question on like, how do I get started? Uh, who do I talk to? With inspiration, I had to give it a try myself. What are the basic rules for playing flag football? Run. <laughs> Run. Yeah, ready, set, go. If you're running, like, you can't block the defender from getting your flag. So even if you finish your route, just keep running. Yes. On defense, if you're standing still, that's a problem. Oh, she fumbled. Wasn't my fault this time. I say you always focus on the next play. You know, not every yes, play is going to be perfect. Play. If you mess up, just go to the next and make it better. Grab yeah, basket. Next play. <laughs> next play. <laughs> you can't go back in time. You gotta move forward. Right? Moving forward as part of the sisterhood. So you're one of us now, so you get a shirt. Oh, Period. Yeah. 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 Come on, you gotta do, do chant with us. This is amazing. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You gotta let us know how you feeling now. Okay, how, you, how you feeling? Pretty good! How you feeling? Pretty good! How you feeling? Pretty good! Pretty good. Pretty good. Woo. The popularity and success of flag football continues to grow with the support of the NFL, and they are hoping to have it recognized as an official Olympic sport in years to come. Thank you for joining me as we get back to routine. I hope you're inspired to get organized, keep the kids healthy as they get back on the field, and find some time for you to stretch or try something new during this season. I'm Chanel Jones, and we'll see you next time on Wellness Today. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, I, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friend, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed him a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch. Oh, and easy. I try to do it, but I end up, try, I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with our bread. Okay. I'm gonna use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread, because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. <laughs> you choose what you would like. I'm gonna okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm gonna try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? well see, I do both sides. This is the side that's gonna go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically wanna kinda smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did wanna do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not you know, smothering it, but I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but mm, okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which I, shocked me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer 
on the counter. My grandma did that, my mom did that. And then it's nice and soft, exactly. you're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you, did I do enough? Okay, now we're gonna use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty tuna. thin slice, like yes. some of my so white American that, cheese is thick. Right, so if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what, we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ew. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh. already, already screwed right. up. It's all right, it's all right. This is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but okay. it's okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> Exactly. So, and that's your lunch. <laughs> yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, it's... what did we put on this? Nothing? No. No, no because... No, no oil, no, no cooking the, spray? The butter is... is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kind of want to go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick after that. Oh, by the way, we have some... Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. that, to cheers. Now we're to getting closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, there exactly. We go. Okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and That's golden That's funny, because what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula. Oh because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half for a pot? Not glass. I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot. You could use a pot. Okay. Whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um I know. Right, we're hot. gonna flip them now. See, I find that you hard. need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. Perfect. But now the now cheese is not press melted. It down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the burger yep. dome. I'm going to get one of these. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, this like is that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, look at the no. meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheese. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, at look that. great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, triangles, rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mmm. Mm. This tastes good, mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh my gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. We did it. Grilled Grill cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Who made Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from...
from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We're gonna make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay? Sneaking in vegetables. Yep, is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We wanna always season our oh, water yes. before. So you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay. Because you're um, a very generous person. Yes, but not with salt. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like, I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes. So it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can. It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger. Yeah. Just, like, pour some in. Oh, that just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. OK. How about right. that? Okay. Good, right. good, good. OK, pour in. This is a pound of elbow mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. OK. You should be good. OK. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the Angel. microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but. You know what? On I know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar, okay. eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to, I use the, yeah, the I big like side. the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not gonna lie, my tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, geez, this is I, like your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. Put it down. Are you, I'm scaring you. <laughs> yes. Scaring you a little bit. I'm scaring myself. Okay. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna break it up because again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will not. Oh, see, yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, what there. we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve 3 fourths cup of the cheese. Can it live together? Yep. OK. OK, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come yes. over here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower is going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot. And why don't we drain the pasta? OK. All right. Let me guess, hot okay. pot? Ooh, it's heavy one, too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta, because that's going to stop the cooking process. Oh, OK. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water. It'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. OK. It's not going to get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you want to go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Ooh, I better just, bring a thing in case it's yeah, hot. Just Hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, now we are going to cut that open and we're going to pour it right into the blender. So All right. That. So now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One. And we half. have whole milk here. You can okay. use two percent, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's going to add yeah. flavor. Right. And it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature, if Oh. It's not. You can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. OK, then what? OK, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're going to let it go for just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. OK. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just we want to blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, sound off the children <laughs> alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. OK, Ooh, that, that looks milky. Look, that looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter? All right. And we're just going to butter our casserole dish. Just How am I doing over here. it? OK. We're going to, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go, like, take but the stick I just like and to, stick it around. Yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of, like, scoop it up with this and Let's, just get the sides Your way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you know, I don't either. so OCD. You really there you are. Go. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. That's a little more. Seem you like can do much. more. Yeah. yeah, like I like to yeah, get it. Yeah, I would in get there. a good goop. I usually just take the sticks. 
Am I getting the sides but There's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and, and bottom. This is where my type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't want, I want every side done mm -hmm. just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up, you know? I want to get an Perfect. A. I want to get an A. A plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay, okay. that's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, be or mise en place. Absolutely, wow. Or mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that. I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know a, that one stick is- It's about is a half, half of a the stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect, and okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right, it's really pretty. It seems like and it's having it a good time. smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking should be. <laughs> You can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Crock and then when add the... we add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't because do that. we want to activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we... to you? It's looking good. Yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to. I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just am like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're going to add our milky okay. cauliflower mixture. But don't I want to get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. Woo! <laughs> God, this is worse. Than, not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine have <laughs> I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know. I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this a little at a time Switch. thing? Like no, this, or can I just dump it Since you've already on? added, the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's going to start is, to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're going to add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now, is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of, the bubble starting to yeah. form. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly. Cook for one to two minutes until thickened. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like once you kind of lift it, you want to just see some of it, some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah, it's like it a is, baby. You always have to be about watching. Five it. minutes of of like babysitting. Yeah. All it right. This seems cooked. Yeah. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna dump it in. Kind of, yeah, and then just continue to stir. I want to have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part. Too. Yeah, this looks Gets pretty so yummy. Cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it, or are you trusting me? I'm gonna trust you. I trust your palate. I need a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot though. Okay. That's pretty tasty. There you go. More I mean, there's salt in the cheese naturally, and so you know that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm gonna grab. Like, I don't want to over salt. The but pasta. I, don't want to I know that's why you can always, you know, you can. Now what happens? Put some on. Now I'm gonna break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that it doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the add. pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it you off. Okay, want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's on. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real that good. Up. We're gonna I would eat it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's gonna get so nice and baked and crispy on the top, and mm. because we're gonna add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm gonna transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Did you feel ready. good about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I will it have again, a sip but I'm just gonna well, trust. you transferred. Okay. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got Ready? it? Yeah. Yum. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yeah. While you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes. day, could you I could do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in, in the fridge, just make sure you know you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> Good job. All right. High five. Yay! News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who's this? Is cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. So the mac and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers. Yeah. Chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right? And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first, why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're going to add three fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with, you know, the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're going to use three egg whites. Have you ever separated I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg want, whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try okay, and you great. can grate me. And then, yeah, you can put the... Um, egg white. Egg white this. will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well... Egg yolk. There we go. Oh, shoot. Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> Just... And it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. Like, this it's isn't... not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah. That's perfect. But I'm going to give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh, really? It'll it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the. Oh my gosh, shoot, that's so much right? better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup that the of panko. Pan yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One that cup just of that. It around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just laying just it on the pan. Lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan. I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. It. So it could be a plate. Could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously. The word of the day. <laughs> Both sides. Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point, other than like the parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. Is that That's great. That looks great. 
I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. And I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but it's always a little yeah. it's questionable. Exactly. What they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake them. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So I'm just dropping mm -hmm. it? How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? Yes. And you can, can yeah, then. perfect. Okay. That's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is going to get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Smell the chicken. It's almost done. Yeah. We're going to make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. We're going to add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. Okay. Any old ketchup? Yep. And I'll you can like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like more, mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's, it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants. Through. This is uh, a, tablespoon? a tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow. Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids, so yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up? Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can or? use that. Whatever. Yeah. Until okay. it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh. It is the so stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, Done. perfect. That's good. Okay. Perfect. All right, now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done, mm -hmm. but what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken? Because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I am ready to stare Stand obsessively. This there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh, here. Okay. And then you can just take the tongs and. Okay. Throw them on there, and then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And they look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, look, I have that little golden top. 
Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and, I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Okay. All right, you grab no, that. I still haven't learned this technique. I will well. grab, that was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this and we can eat. Yum! Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful, that's serve, hot. Serve you up some? Yes, please. Look at how, oh, do you see? It's good, and look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm gonna see if I can taste a okay, cauliflower. Yep, that's the real test. Well, the real test will, will come. Will come. Let's see. Okay. I'm just gonna use my hands, take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. No, this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Smells good. Bon appetit. Cheers, bon Cheers. appetit. Cheers. Okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just want to see. So hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. going to get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no tastes right. Good. There's no right and mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. <laughs> you are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have picky eaters. Combined, yes. and so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good, and now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. Right, I an think excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. To you too. <laughs>Good morning, it's Tuesday, a moving site playing out in Scotland as we speak. Yeah, tens of thousands waiting through the night to bid farewell to the Queen. It is September 13th. This is today. Royal send off, a mile long parade of mourners paying their final respects to Queen Elizabeth after her children 